All right, y'all. Uh, we're we're back with another episode with the Dixie Doggers podcast. Uh, we have somehow coerced the the one and only Uncle Pat into doing a a segment. We're gonna we're gonna this will be our first one, and uh, it'll be you know general knowledge. If you got questions and stuff, you can you can text them to him or email them to us or or get on Facebook or any social media platform and contact any of us and put a question that you want us to, to, you know, want him to answer. Uh, we can, we can ask him the question, or like I said, you can ask him the question and he can give you an answer and we'll try to do this as often as possible. We're getting to where we're able to turn out these podcasts a lot more, more frequent than we were before. Uh, we're, we're not doing the actual video part of it. So that cuts down the editing time. And that gives us more time to to turn out more content. So, with that being said, uh, I'd like to welcome Pat Lewing, uh, one of the greatest dog men that I know, and he. We've got some questions that's come in. So, Uncle Pat, uh, most people are going they're going to know who you are that listen to this anyway. But for for the new listeners that we have, and I hope we get a whole bunch more of them, uh, tell us tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself. Oh, I, man, look, you made me blush with all that. I didn't know if it was a podcast or if somebody was trying to get a date. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, there's nothing, nothing really special. Uh, hang out with Ed Barnes and Emmy Tusker's Magazine, and I'm just old, and I don't know a whole lot, but I know a whole lot of people that knows a whole lot, so yeah. I call on them. You know, that's how I'm going to be able to answer these questions, but... Well, it was good seeing everybody at Uncle Earl's. It was a good show. Yes, it was. This year, I mean, it was fantabulous. Um, hey, did I tell you? I uh, I got a puppy for my wife at Earl's. Uh, really? Is that yes, the, is that the puppy I seen you with down there? So you yeah, that so biting, you got one. Puppy. You got one yes. for your wife. Yeah, it's the best trade I ever made. Oh, Lord and mercy! Yeah. Listen, at him. I hear you. Well, I, was, well, I mean. You know that, yeah. I guess that'd be a pretty good trade, just depending on uh, what you're working with. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was raining this morning, so I didn't get to work no dogs or nothing. So I got my marriage license and went out to the clerk of court's office, and I asked her, "Could I just sign the back of it? You know, yeah. in case somebody needs a project, or maybe I could, <laughs> I could take it off my taxes." But she said, "Marriage license, don't work like car time." And I'm like, "Well, I was, I was really bootied about that. I thought this was going to be over." As fast as it started, but yeah. I was sadly mistaken this morning. Now, that yeah. lady, she looked over them glasses at me, and she didn't know whether I was serious or not. And I really, I was just wishful thinking. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know how it goes. Oh yeah, but, yeah. Um, that's about the size of it. Been running a lot of dogs. I hear you. What what a you, you, y'all run a quite a bit of dogs at a, at a time, don't you? Man, you were talking a little earlier. You said y'all dropped a y'all dropped a box not just a few days ago on them. Yeah, Sunday morning, uh, we dropped four boxes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, man. Uh, uh, two guys came that I hunt with right here, and they got two three dogs apiece. I didn't bring none because I was going to church. But, I mean, we started 400 yards from the corner of my porch. So I probably had two or three pull off the yard for a little bit. Uh, but they ain't much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear but you. One of them got, yeah. Uh, and so one of them guys invited somebody. And then he invited his brother-in-law. And then their father-in-law came. And all these boys, is they got, they from here to Scrapping Valley, which is where Gene Reynolds used to live down there below Hempfield. So it ended up being a bunch. And. It didn't start out with about two dogs on the ground, but you know how they run these days. And That's right. Every time they cross the road, they just cold pack, cold pack, and uh, then split off and cold pack. I got a good many hogs in this one spot. Mm-hmm. I think I seen I seen five hogs cross the road with nothing running. They were just getting out of the way. Really? So I mean, it's like it is. Yes. So the, so a, um, so the, the, there's an evolution of the hogs that you know we, I've been preaching that for a while, and a lot of people think I'm crazy as hell. Because the ho- the hogs seem like they have evolved. They're they're a different hog than they were, you know, fifteen years ago. Yes, because anything that stopped in bait got killed. Yep. Uh, yep. I, People I just, said, "Boy, we got a bunch of Russians in these woods." I said, "Well, I ain't re- never met nobody named Kalishnikov kicking them out of a, hel- a helicopter nowhere." That's right. 
There's two sets of Russian hogs in the United States. A fellow over yonder in South Carolina, Buck and Boar, whatever, I think he had some pure strain Eurasians. Yes. So much so that the Safari Club would, you know, the rich folk deal where they would put them in the record books. Yeah. And a uh, place in Missouri, High Adventure Ranch. Uh, Monty Pitts, great guy, great place. He had a set that would, uh, they were pure Eurasians like that. And I'm going to tell you right now, Russian hogs don't run from nothing. No, hard. they run to you. They rally. Yes. They huckle the wagons. Uh, a guy said, I'm going to put my, it's like a four or something like a high fence. And the uh, littlest hog in there probably weighed 550. And because uh, they feed them in deer pellets, you know, they oh, yeah. them deer pellets. And uh, when you would shoot one of them, the guy would want to go over and take his picture. I know. We'll come back in about 30 minutes. And we get all the pictures you want because yeah. they would circle the wagons and like muskox and protect the dead. And I said, well, I'm going to put my dogs in there. I said, if you love them, you better not. Yeah, if you love them, don't do it. Yeah, if one ever squeals, you, every hog that can hear him is coming to see. Like, kind of like javelinas do. Yeah. And uh, they clannish. And, but the reason the hogs run, it's, it's just simple evolution. They ain't leaving nothing to breed, but something that can outrun a cur dog. Yep. And and, 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 I'm a, and I'm a, I and I'm I just thought of something else. Another fallacy people say is, well, well, you bred those July Walkers in there for speed, not at all. I bred them not for bottom. For bottom, yeah. Bred, that's right. Ain't nothing outrun a cur dog for you on yard. Nice thing to say. I, I when you said that when when I first started, you know, delving into this stuff about with the, you know with some of the July and stuff crossed in. Uh, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, well, did they put them in there for the speed? And I was like, man, I don't, the cur dogs that we have are fast. You know, they're extremely fast. But like you said, for, for a half a mile to a mile, man, that's something going to stroll. But after that, he fades out. So yeah, that, that's know, where that <laughs> July comes in there. That's it. Yeah. And if you want even more, you know, a July ain't a real deep bottom dog either. Yeah. About four hours, mm -hmm. five hours. But them old, them old, them old line walkers like Daddy had. You know, my daddy had fought for him about forty years, and mm -hmm. he wanted he wanted to be able to lay a blanket over them. You know, we wanted ten of them in a spot in a ten by ten, all barking every breath, and old cow just trotting across the road, and they come behind him running him, and you know that that does sound good, yeah. but it ain't really exhilarating to me. No, they not running to catch him; they mm -hmm. running to push him and. Uh, I think that's when people tried to swap over to the walker dog. They, they got trim walkers to start with, which a trim walker runs to catch. It. I mean, they're mean. Yeah. They're a big old mean dog. If you had never been to a coon hunt where one's fighting on a tree, you oh, don't know yeah. it. They're bad mean. That's um, in the alligators. Yeah, but they still ain't a running walker. If trim walkers could outrun running walkers, then people at the All American Fox Hunt be running trim walkers. That, that's right. You know, the only, reason I ain't, the only reason I ain't running a whippet is because it's a sight hound. Yep. <laughs> He's running a track, they'd be running them. I mean. Uh, uh, they, well, and, and, I, and I agree with you on that because uh, we got some whippet crosses out there on the damn yard. And there's, not, and, there's not, and there's nothing wrong with that, I it, mean. But, I mean, like you said, if if that dog had a nose on it, man, hey, it'd be unreal. But it don't. It's a sight hound. Uh, it's made for when we get in an area and they can get out in the open field. I can kick that little dog loose, and uh, she she's gonna stop the race. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, well, I'm a, I'm gonna start the question segment right here because this is where this is gonna correlate with what we're talking All right, about. Well, let's get it. My question of the week is: How come Bay Pen Woods class dogs don't look like my Woods dogs? All right. Because when my dog go through them woods. Oh, I got video of them hitting 25 mile an hour. But that's because I restarted it when they was cutting across the cutover, yeah. pulling up there, to, you know, to, to stop hot water. But in but reality, a, in these pine thickets, yes, if you get exactly. anything in the double digits, guys, you get anything in the double digits, feed him, feed him. Yep. You know, if you're down there six or seven or eight, if you, hey, if you love him, I love him for you. That's right. But, but he ain't going to make me, yeah, he's got the average in the double digits, but ain't but ten. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's that's pretty fast. You um, know, you talking about the 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 bay pen dogs looking like uh, 
all Dapper Dan and stuff, you know. I, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I agree with a lot of that. We we went to Oklahoma and Rusty, that last bay that Rusty Mayshore had. Uh, yeah, we did. We Rusty, did. Rusty Mashmore is what I got. Uh, he's yeah, a good uh, name. Uh, yeah, man, he's one of the best. He tried to call right, right before we got started, and I had to call him back. But anyway, we did the Woods Dog class, and we basically, you know, it normally you can buy your Woods Dog option at a bay pen and run your Woods right. Dogs, and they're all intertwined. Wow. Well, what we did on this one is we had a class and we ran only Woods Dogs. And let me tell you, there was one or two that come out there that were there. They was the prettiest show dog I'd ever seen. And I couldn't even score the dog. They didn't have no scars on them. The dog was, you know, five or six years old and bayed every breath. Now, bayed like a champ, but they bayed about a half inch from that hog's hair. Hello. And I said, I said, let let me see a scar. Tell me, give me something I can look at to tell me that that's really a woods dog. Oh, man, this is my woods dog. I said, well, I. You know, I I, I I don't know what to say, but but now this other old yellow dog that come in there that had scars all over it, beat up the hell and back. He made he made you know he didn't put on as good a quite a good a show, but he done what he was supposed to do. He controlled the hog. If the hog broke, he got ahead of the hog, stopped the hog, and made it take a bay. That's how you yeah. know. And I judged that me yeah. and it, it, it was a little different judging deal, you know. But I seen that. Uh, some of the the difference in the woods dog and the bay pen dogs, the the bay pen dogs, yes, I agree with you. Most of them are all nice and pretty. And sh- I got two of them out here right now. Chaos. That son of a gun looks like a show dog, son. Well, hey, you know, he ain't he ain't been on no no bad boar hogs in the woods, so I can't call him a woods dog. All you gotta <laughs> do, all little kisses here's all you gotta do. Anybody wants to argue with me, I'm gonna put them on my four wheeler. And I'm gonna let them them yellow flyers and all that stuff get real high in the ditch, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna hold them out at ninety degrees, and let their face go through there. Yes, at fifteen, just fifteen miles an hour, <laughs> not twenty five, fifteen miles an hour, yeah. and let's see what they look like after a hundred yards. It ain't it ain't really got nothing to do with getting cut. When you looking in them creases. And them front legs, mm. they need to be broad. When you pull them ears back, they need to be, if they don't have scabs in them, they need to have the lines where the scab just come off. Yep. And and right there, them tear ducts with mm-hmm. them wires been going up that nose. That That's really the scars I'm talking about. That's the telltale sign. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't really care. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw a shout out to the, the people that judged Uncle Earl this year, I uh, I really gave them a hard time a few days. Uh, <laughs> I did. I ain't going to lie. But yeah, I, I know you was on it a little bit there for a day or two. I did. I can't watch. And But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I saw a judge look at me, and I know this boy. I work with him. I know him, know him. Look at me and said, I didn't even see what y'all saw, and I ain't took my eyes off of it. Okay, here's the thing, and I'm going to apologize to all three or four or however many I talk pretty bad to. <laughs> I did. Yeah, Mr. Poor Mr. Curtis never quit pouring me coffee. Oh, that's a hand right there. That's, that's a, a, that's true, a, that's that's a, a good testament fellow. of a true man right there. Yep. And uh, they watching every day. I walk up there, my eyes are fresh. Mm-hmm. They doing their eyes is as equally tired. So I'm not saying that they looking at some and looking harder at others. No, their eyes is if they I'm you know some people's ADD. I'm A through Z. Yeah. So after the first minute of the first band, my eyes is already tired. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I uh, I commend them. I I do too. I couldn't be. I don't know if I couldn't do it, man. Um, I just don't know what to say. I don't know any other way to do it. There's a lot of philosophy out there on woods classes, and I ain't saying nobody cheated. I ain't saying nobody cheated. Mm-hmm. But the woods class was designed originally <laughs> for the guys that didn't vape in. Yep. And but you got people that vape in and they hog hunt. Uh, yeah. But I don't. But but hey, look, I catch a piglet 
It's on Facebook. I'm showing this to somebody. There you go. I'm, I, I, hey, look, you know if I'm treating a possum and I'm showing it, <laughs> I'm damn sure it's out of a pig. Come that's on, exa- man. That's exactly right. Here we go. Got some swat, you know what I, I mean? You know, put that son bitch up there and be sh- taking a picture, shining boy. Yeah. And look, when in them, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I just I ain't bad about nobody. I love everybody, and we need y'all to bathe these dogs. Yes. Yes, we because do. At the end of the day, them numbers are used for legislation if they're needed to preserve our rights. Exactly. So we need to stick together. Regardless. Exactly. We, we can agree right. to disagree on shit, but we got to. That's right. You know, and, like you said, that that would that sportsman class y'all doing is designed to do exactly, you know, for people to get people into the bay pinning world. It, that's you know, right. It's, and, it, to get them in there, that that uh, Braxton Sultan uh, boy from Arkansas. The, the, the uh, Uncle Pat Cooler 2000 Buckout Champion of Downfield. Yes, sir. Let me tell you. I, ain't that a good kid? He is as good as it gets, man. And that sportsman class. He he did really good in it. He just barely missed placing in the top ten, I think, and uh, and and a lot of it was his fault, and you know, but his dog was phenomenal, and there were so many other people that you could see like that. But then again, like you said, there's always one or two that try to slide something in. Seems like, yeah, and and you know what? If you didn't get a belt buckle, and if you didn't get a cup, and you ran into sportsman's, guess what? You can run again next year. The people that got awards can't. Yep, <clears throat> and uh, they got to move up to the big boys. And this is and and since, since we're right there, before we get off of it, question number two from T.J. Thompson from Falkett Island, Louisiana. That'd be little Remy's daddy. Yes, sir. They uh, yeah, he tried to much say Remy was mine, but he got too much hair to be mine. Yeah, but uh, that kid's anyway, up, man. Oh man, he, the first responder. Yeah, <laughs> what came first That's responder. it. And uh. We wanted to know whose dog bit old cowboy's ear off or yeah. tore it off or whatever. Yeah, who the hell, whose dog did that? Why don't you know? Be nice if somebody would at least own up to it. Yes, um, and it's not about the dog. Hey, they should have bit his ear off five years ago because I never seen him run so good. Hey, uh, buddy, he was on it, wasn't he? Did he? I, that son of gun put on a show. Then I was like, he, well, he, hell, he he got a little vicious. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I think Jeremy Pagoda's dog, uh, Heathen, also had, had got bit while he was up there where all the dogs were at. So I think there I think there was one or two other dogs that also had been in some kind of altercation or something. So I don't know I don't, if somebody's dog yeah. got loose and they didn't hey, know look, it. it happens. It happens, yes. guys. It but happens. it'd be nice to know. And if uh, proper etiquette. And we're not blaming nobody. We're not gonna call. I don't. I don't even know anybody wouldn't blame nobody if they did. Oh. I wish you to be at Randy. I wish you to be at Randy. Yeah. <laughs> I got dog bit. I got dog bit. Yeah, you did, didn't you? You got. You had so one of them. Shot, did I? Yeah. <laughs> Matt Lay from Triple Seven mm-hmm. is now known as Death Row Kennels. Death Row Kennels. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hey, he's got them big old monster dog, boy. Hey, that thing, boy. Hey, look at his. Them dogs is they they always scared in the hell out of placing. Yeah. Uh, they always gonna be there and they're consistent and mm-hmm. that's what I like about the Jagger dog. Jaeger, Jagger, whatever you call him. Yeah. He is he you can bet the farm on him. Now he looks like he is baying good and tight, but he is a boxer. He is measuring for that one knockout bite. I don't think I've ever seen him go the distance. He always ends with a KO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but saying that to say this, if you knew Ellie, mm. I think Ellie was his mama. Um, I took her to Rusty Mash Moore's first band, and she was 13 years old, died 10 days after I brought her back home to Jake's, and she caught out. I, <laughs> no I was, yeah, I, I was. You yeah, were there. You yeah. were there. We, she gummed out. Yeah, she got that son bitch out. That, yeah, that's right. Because we were talking about how old she was. I was like, "Ain't no way." Yes, and, and you told me right. she, I think she was thirteen damn years old. And I was like, "Look, buddy, I would, I'd have been scared to have seen that dog when she was about six. I think you have to get Jake to tell a story on her, but she was a woods dog first for maybe a few years. Yeah, I don't know. She might have been baby in too. I don't. 
I just know she's a, was a producer, and they she come in, they bred her, and she didn't take. Come in and bred her, and she didn't take. So Jake just said, let her go have some fun. Yeah. And uh, the hog ain't what, what ki- old age killed her. Because yeah. she wasn't limping a bit when I broke her off. Oh, no, she, oh. she wasn't limping at all. She was a... Uh... She she was in in rare form, buddy. She was ready to go again. So, um, I'm saying this, guys, because I need to hear it myself. Because I'm the world's worst uh, about jumping on the judge, and I shouldn't. You know, it's just proper etiquette yep. at the bakery. And, and I'm gonna say this: I was probably the worst one at a girl this year about that. <laughs> And I, so I just I had to walk away. Yeah. You know I went I went to I went to every one girls there was, and I was laid up there on the ground in the cool, uh, waiting on that lady to open that red building up to get a cup of coffee in the morning because mm-hmm. I had been listening. You know I mean I ain't always been an upstanding pillar of society. There you go. And I, and I, I love the girls and uh, Ed said you know we're gonna have to buddy up with Jake. I said well Jake's already my friend so this is gonna be really easy. Yeah. Because he likes dogs and I like dogs so. Trying to bring unity to everything. Yep. But between the woods and that, me and Jay's gotten really close, and uh, and Ed's still Ed. He's <laughs> one of the best guys you'll ever meet. Yep. But you'll never really know it because he ain't gonna tell you a whole lot. That's right. <laughs> that, that's that's right. Uh, he, but if he does, if he does listen, it's usually good. Yeah. If he's got something to say, I'm definitely gonna listen. There ain't you talking because about the proper he, etiquette thing though. With the with the you know about cowboy's ear, hell, we got ready to leave. It was uh the next morning, we get down there by our camp, and somebody had backed into Nathan's car, tore the trunk, the the rear quarter panel up. I'm talking about it wasn't just a little dent either. It it's bad, and nobody nobody came up and said, "Hey man, I'm sorry." You know, we backed into the car or, or none of that. Like nothing, not a word. And uh, so, yeah, like, there could be a little better etiquette going on down there. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to start no vicious rumors. Oh yeah, but but with the way things are going, with the people assuming things, and the people, some people obviously doing things. They, 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 they probably probably not going to be no more woods option. It's going to be the sportsmen's and 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 uh, one dog and the two dogs. Yeah, that's from now. And we're just going to keep it simple and. Uh, Look, I got asked 99 questions right. an hour about it. Well, you think that dog really – man, look, I really don't care. Yeah. I really don't care if it did or didn't. Uh, I just work here. Yeah. But I'm you, just here for the chicken cracklings. Yeah, yeah, hey, dude, the, the chicken cracklings, yes. You know, I'm glad we, we, we finally got somebody – man – was that not on time? That was dead on. And I don't even eat too much fish. I usually just eat with my uh, brother. Uh, you know, Sleep Wayne Willie's my half brother. That's it. Yeah, his mom and my mama was mamas. There you and, go. Uh, yeah. That's so, exactly right. I- I'm the other half of his brother. <laughs> I seen Sleep Wayne. I look, I seen a judge call Sleep Wayne Willie out for going to run a woods dog. And he thought it was really a woods dog, but he really didn't you know. Somebody probably just gave it to him. Yeah. And he was going to run it. <laughs> and uh, here's how Sleek handled it. Well, okay. Well, what class can I put him in? That's it. There you I, go. That's just the first one on the list. Hey, he didn't care. No. He didn't care. That's all. It, he's just there to have a good time and he to support. He didn't get mad. He didn't. Hey, if you want to learn how to conduct yourself. Yep. Watch Slick Wayne Willie. That's right. He's a great guy, man, and he, he's, he's dedicated to the cause. Yes, sir. He stayed over at the camp with us, a man. We, we I mean, he, he. Of course, we always get along. We've always got along. And it, but, I'm, like you said, this time, I don't know, man. This event to me, it was so much better as far as like, uh, you know, camaraderie with with the people that I'm used to, even the people that I know good. It's like, man, everybody was just in a good mood. Everything was going pretty good. Uh, had a good time. We got to eat good. We drank good. You know, it, it was just a good time. I, I'm going to tell you, 
This is what I told Jake. Nine o'clock on the first morning, the band's just going. I think it's the puppies. They had about 21, whatever. I look at him. I say, cuz, it feels festive. Yes. The weather the was great. The temple was festive. I haven't felt this in three or four years over here. Mm -hmm. It's festive. And then by Saturday, the cops is having to park cars. Hey, Jaybird's on point as usual up there, you know. Oh, yeah. And, um... I just, I feel like, I feel like no matter what happened in the earlier rounds, I don't know, you hear this, hear that, I don't know. I feel like the best dog won, the one and the two dog too. Yeah. From what I saw, uh, but Hand Grenade, I always have a, a special place in my heart because me and Chris Anson and Josh Rainwater has won so much money off him in Calcutta. Yeah. Before GW, and I won't be it against GW. Me and his uh, friends, uh, I don't be it against Doc. Mr. Flem, he didn't, he didn't do it. So, uh, about that, uh, first time, I didn't really know Hand Grenade, but Chris Anson, top notch dog man. And it's, it's, you know, Calcutta King, you know. That's it. Yeah. And $80. And uh, four minute bay and three minutes of it, his feet wasn't on the ground, and he never quit baying. He caught the hog, and Mr. Flynn, I think, said, You better turn him loose, or I'm gonna kill you. He spit that hog out, and it dang near landed so far away from him <laughs> that uh, he almost got a dock for being too far back. Hell but, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think when GW first got him, it was a little bit of, you know, a new hammer throwing pains. Yeah. But from what I see, yes, it's working I'm now. Not a smart man, but it looks like uh, GW is uh, racking up some points. Yeah, he's he's getting well, it figured out. That's for sure. I don't know what he won before this. What was I don't know. He won something at Downsford, didn't he? Or I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he's, 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 he's won a few things, but uh, but he's been consistent with it. And yeah. the dog, the dog's Cold always Red. there. Code Red's coming in there with them young dogs. Oh which yeah, which I've been. You know, that's just that's a that that's a given. Uh, horse groups and cowboy, and mm -hmm. you gotta look. I mean, look. I know I get ready to hell about a goose, you know, yeah. but that is a lovingest dog, y'all. All right, I got it. Listen, while we're on that, and you and you already just, you just answered it. I had this thing over here. It said in my notes right here. It said Randy Durrell's secret question is to ask you. How good is Goose? About 80% of what Crow was. Oh, that's what. 80% oh, of what Crow was. <laughs> oh, but yeah. That, and, that, and here's why. And here's why. If you was to start hog baying today for the first time, and you watched 100 bays in the woods to figure out how you going to judge them, Crow would beat him every time. Really? Crow would wait that hog, and he would make that judge count the five count in between barks mm. every time. Okay, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna, and this is gonna this is gonna spill into our yellow dog question. All right. I seen a yellow dog. It wouldn't bark <clears> up a tree, so we put a goat bell on its neck. And I had his brother right there. And actually, it was a female. Had his brother that would knock the top out. Hey. I'd kill 20 with her, me and a group, and I'd kill 12 with him. And they were usually limbing out. We shoot them limbing out when we walking up to the tree. Oh. But she'd be standing that wood looking at that squirrel. And a lot of times you had to you had to spook the squirrel to shoot it because it wouldn't be five feet, six feet over her head. Just yeah. looking down at her, flattened out on that limb, and she's just looking up at it. <laughs> them, them hogs, they're no different than people. If I got two 12-year-old boys or three 12-year-old boys coming at me, they're going to walk around me. I'm going to take my belt off. Mm -hmm. But if I got three gangbangers with tattoos and teardrops under their eyes, yeah, they gonna step a little, and I'm gonna step a little. That's right. You know what I mean? Because they probably know me and they respect me, because they know I'm scared and I'm always strapped. Mm hmm. And I know they strapped. Mutual respect. The mutual respect. Yeah. So this is a this is a test I did. 
I had a jeep that was open. Her name was Pinky. She was a clay hound, full clay hound. Cat dog, buck, I'm a yep. grit. And I cast her where I knew there was a hog. And she baited. it. I sent three young dogs down there, and it broke. I videoed this whole thing. It took about six hours. And every time I could, I had weed eater strings on them. Every time I caught a dog on the roads, and when he got back to Pinky, it stopped and bayed. Yep. So it ain't necessarily barking on the track as it is you scaring that hog. Yep. You scared because that hey, if he can smell a sow in heat six miles, without, he's smelling dog coming. without a doubt. We, now, we. sometimes I like my silent dog, mm -hmm. and it's not because I didn't want the hog to hear him. <laughs> we ain't gonna incriminate ourselves, that's right. But sometimes we need to go through here, there, and yonder. It's no, I mean, it's, it's no big secret that we're gonna end up every time you go hunting. You about ninety nine percent chance you're going to end up somewhere you ain't supposed to be. Yep. If you're do it, to me, if you're doing it right, you you're on the line or cross the line every time. And and the more you don't want it to happen, the more it's gonna happen. Yep. So you just you roll with it and you try to be respectful. And but sometimes it's just better if they not know you was down there at all. Uh, yes, sir. Um, All you got to do is just get your stuff and move on down the road. Well, I, let me say that guy's name. Did you got that guy's name that asked the yellow? Michael Smith. Do you know him? He's a, he's a pretty good guy, I seem like, from what he told me. Michael Smith. He wanted to know about the lineage of uh, the best yellow dogs okay. and how come he's having so much trouble finding a, finding a, a yellow dog that suits him. Yeah, the one something that suits him, yeah. So... What I what I did I send that to you? What Garrett I, Piku I, and Rowdy? Yeah, I've got uh, what yeah, right you know, here. What what you, so, yeah, so you can elabor so elaborate on that. It's from Garrett Piku and and who'd you say and Rowdy? Uh, Rowdy Ward, the boy that come with you. Yeah, they yeah. Win, they all time, but they make their living with yellow dogs. So oh, that's yeah. why I mean they not weekend warriors. No, they they they're, they're dog men and a half. Times two. I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they hunt different than I do, and I give them a fit, and Rowdy kind of looks at me. I think about had way well, he wants to whoop me all the time, but he ain't tried yet because he knows I'll probably stab him. But <laughs> hey, he's a good kid. He's a, good, yeah, he's they, a real it, good kid. Yes, and, sir, uh, without a doubt. And I think a lot of them boys and, and Garrett, and I know his dad and his sister. And, I mean, his dad, 40 some years old, was at rodeo and just. He just raked a saddlebronc horse with no range wrong either. I mean, and he was—I mean, it was a pro horse, and he just raked and made him like it. Really? You know, so they—they they top notch people. But um, what what Garrett sent me about it was here, guys. This is going to answer your questions. He said um, the problem with most yellow dogs is they didn't start out yellow. Our dogs go back to wood, rough, hutto. Cotter, Stetson, and a little bit of heart. Now, I don't know, and I know what heart is. So, if you guys are yellow dogs, y'all gonna know what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, he said his uncle Danny got them in the late seventies. Uh, they were the Woodruff and Hutto and Stetson dogs, and uh, they really started focusing on genetics. It was like nineteen eighty three, you know. Um, but the dogs were black saddle back then, and. Uh, they had two really good dogs named Sam and Puddin. It just happened to come out yellow, and that's where their yellow dog started at. So it was, um, I figure, now this is my guess, that they line bred them and it changed the color. Yeah, very well could have. You know, I've got. So that was already Brindle. Yep. So the F1 cross would bring it back solid. Took, I don't took, know. Took, that's a, another took a recessive gene and pulled it back up. Yeah. Well, that, well, I'm just going to tell you, there's a yellow dog in the wood pile. Something. You ever, been, you ever been in Walmart and you look at that baby and you look at that mama? Yeah. And you look at that man and you know dad don't well, he needs to whip her when he gets home. Yeah, something's off. You boy. So, dogs is no different. Um, I agree. I agree. Now, see, that, but, but, that, that dog Nathan's got that Kimmer dog, Louie. He's, he's a buttermilk. He's almost white. You know, he's so blonde. And. Yeah. 
there was two of them in there like that, and I think the, the other four was all Brindle out of that litter. And uh, the parents are, I think they're both registered, uh, or the mom was registered OMCBA, and the daddy was dual registered OMCBA and Kimmerstock. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and be honest with the world. Uh, when I breed, like, generally, the generally dog and all them, they, they camera stock on the cur dog side. Yeah. They, uh, and you got some of that. You got you oh, yeah. some of that, right, JG? Yes, sir. We, we, let's uh, let, go on and tell that, finish telling that story. And we're going okay, well, I'll, I'll get into telling about right the exactly. Yeah, I'm going I'm to tell them about that. I'm going to tell them about some of that general lease stuff. And, and what 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 he re really went on to say was what you see in a lot of stock dogs today is they don't really have the hunt that they had back in the day, you know. Uh, and and Jake will be the first one to tell you that's what started hog baying. Man, you you had your cow dogs, and we and we hog hunted. We didn't have a stock law until nineteen ninety two, so you you hog hunted them same and squirrel hunted them same dogs. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, I don't know how y'all grow up, but we grow up on cornbread. That's I mean, right. it ain't. I mean, any dog ate to scrap cornbread. You know, that's, a, that's so, exactly right. Uh, uh, Jay, uh, he'll be the first to tell you. He started out hog baying with his daddy's cow dogs because daddy was cowboy, and he called cows with them. And uh, and that's what that's what Gary's going. You know, but that's been thirty five years ago. So nowadays, uh, the breeders basically. The guy already answered his own question with what he said was he said the breeders they just breeding dogs. Yeah, they're, they're not hunting. That's exactly right. They're not keeping a whole litter and starting them and seeing what they're working with and then establishing a line of dogs. Like you said, they're they're just breeding damn dogs and selling them for two hundred dollars. Or what right. or whatever, you know. Yeah, whatever you can get or in or a five hundred with a piece of paper. Yeah. Hey, you know you know what happens when you hold that paper real tight and you push it in the thorns? <laughs> it comes all to pieces, buddy. It comes all to pieces. Yeah. I Although know. pedigree is uh paramount, papers ain't. Pedigree is hey. different than papers. It, without a um, doubt. So basically Garrett and, and Rowdy answered their question. They run an old family dogs and I know for a fact the yellow dogs you got come off the Sally Ranch over there, Roy Sally, and it's uh, just bred redundantly over generations. Yeah. Same old dogs. They don't let too many of them dogs out. And I can get a dog because one of their outcrosses, I let them have a little dog I got from Ricky Ware and Kishaminga. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the best Kimmers cross mountain curve. Uh, and she was gun shiny, let me have her. And she wouldn't leave the cows alone, so I knew what to do to her. That's right. I took her to some cowboys. Put, put her, put her mean, to work where she can work. And uh, and I think their mama took up with her because she's actually Brindle. And the next litter of puppies they had, a lot of them's tails fell off, had tails, and they started looking at more white you're talking about. Yep. They don't got no black muzzle. They just kind of white-looking dogs. Mm -hmm. well, in, in like, the, if, if, if you're ever around a, a Kimmer breeder, or the Kimmer Stock Association or an event, if you say white, they will have a damn meltdown. You got to say buttermilk. Yeah, that's the, right. The, oh, my God. Let me tell you, Pat. I said, boy, that damn dog's white, ain't he? And they looked. They said, no, buttermilk. I said, I ain't got no buttermilk. They said, no, it, okay. it's buttermilk. I was like, that son of a bitch is white. I, you can't tell me that. And, uh, I, I, buddy, they, they were just not having that. So, so I knew Mr. Norman Kimmer from the bulldog world mm -hmm. and Mr. Robert Kimmer. Yep. Mr. Norman lived down there in Mississippi, but he was originally from up there. I think, I think it's Grandview, Tennessee. Yeah, or Mountain, Tennessee yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Robert, that, I think they were first cousin. You know, Mr. Norman Kimmer died in the woods hog hunting. Yeah. And uh, Mitch, his son, is still keeping his legacy going. They moved back up there. And uh, just great dog men. And Yeah, Mr. Robert's a good guy. We... Uh, he come last year. He came down to uh, our KSBA hunt that we had here in Alabama, and uh, um, good, good good man there. I'm I'm more toward the South Fork Bear Kimmer because I'm old. I don't know the new stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess I need to if I'm gonna be on these podcasts. I need to get out and about a little more I hear than you. I normally would. But I had a Kimmer look like Lassie. I got him from Greg Noah in Raglan, Alabama. Raglan, Alabama. 
You yeah. know Greg Noah. I know, I know, I know, I know of Mr. Greg. That's I pulled up. It. Has he a lot of dogs. Hey, he had that hill behind his house. Mm-hmm. There's a mountain. What it was, and the whole mountain was dogs. Oh yeah, they they said he's got a hundred damn head. <laughs> best two dogs there. Oh well, I ain't gonna say the best two. Greg won Plat Dog of the Year with Mossy Oaks Hammer and Jack. Mm -hmm. I think he was a Weems dog, but he had a Kimmer, a South Fork Bear Kimmer that was a Grand Squirrel Champion. This is how, I, but this is one of this a long time ago. I learned that the Jill will pick better than you can pick. Just let her pick. Yep. She went, she got out of her hot box because he didn't want to breed her because he was competition hunting. She went through a hundred heads. To get to the plot dog. Now she wasn't in Tennessee when he won it. So she didn't know. She didn't see the trophy. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. She but she bypassed a hundred dogs he was selling to pay the rent and electric bill to get to that champion over there. And she stuck to him and he said, Lord, he said, I can't register the puppies. I said, Well, I'm offshore. I don't know when I'll come in. I'm gonna pay you every week to feed them till I get there. And that was Obini and Crop. Uh, they was half Kimmer and half Plot. Yeah. And Josh Sandler was supposed to have the best stud dog in the world at Old George, and he was. He was dynamite. And so we had a, a stud dog showdown, and he had just bought him this one. He just bought this bulldog, right? $200. <laughs> <laughs> we had, and we, we, we cast it. They both, they were tempered cat. Fell bad the same. We we was eat, we had we had each other's dogs in our tracker, and he's a real good friend of mine. It, was, it wasn't no money on it. Was just a friendly push deal, and uh, we got up there to that. And it was in a big old creek. One was on one side of him. Was on a, about a hundred and fifty sixty pound boy. He turned that bulldog loose, and it straightway went and got back on that four wheeler. <laughs> 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 and, Ke and Kevin Bynog, if you if you know Lucum Bynog, he was at he's at Uncle Earl's every year. Yeah, like if you walk straight out of that gate, he's in that trailer over yonder. Mister Newcomb got the little gray mustache. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, you talk about a hog hunter, huh? Say the game warden said it. Yeah, the game warden said he could go on the national forest over there and catch four hogs and leave the shadow room for thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they ever caught him in his day. Hell I don't yeah. think he does that, but that's, uh, that would be Kevin's daddy. And Kevin got down there in the creek and got to talking to them two stud dogs, and they caught that hog. And uh, we never had it. And I ended, up, I ended up with George at my house. And that's the dog I used 15, 17 years ago, or whatever, 15 years ago, to start crossing over a July walker. Okay, I got you. It was the George dog, not oh, George. my dog, because he was half blood. Yeah. It was, um, I get thousands of dollars for this lemon spotted pink nose, July, supposed to be in with a big flag tail like a bird dog. And I say she had bird dog in her. I don't know if the man lied to me or not, but, uh, she was going across the cut over and pointed and we were in kick and a pig run out of there. Oh, shit. So I'm like, that is a murder dog. I mean, I look. I that's ain't a, a genius. That's had a little bit of Kerner in her, huh? Yeah. So that's that's the dogs that started the uh, toot toot and a dog called LG that big A, Aaron Lee on down there. And 10 years ago, these these dogs brought eight to 12,000. I mean, Dustin Reeves, the boy that comes in a wheelchair. Yeah. He, he's got, uh, he calls her Pat because he got it from me. Uh, he stays, they still breeding these dogs, same dogs. But that's what started, that ain't what started it, but that was the first cross I made. Hey, and it always seemed, and it always seemed to work better with the female being the walker. There you go. And all these dogs were silent. And I figured out how to make them all solid. You don't put no mouth full of dirt. <laughs> don't go with people. Don't take them ever. Take them hunting with people with dogs and more. Yep. And and I agree with that. Uh, we were talking about that, uh, about having an open dog and putting it with dogs that are silent. If the dog's already running and it's barking on track, well, you might not ever get it out of that. Chances are it might, it might not talk as much, but it still barks. But if you have a dog, that comes from a line that's open and you put it with dogs that are silent and it never hears dogs bark, it, you know, it'll be tight mouth. And, and like I said, now it, 
we've done it before, Pat, here. Uh, we've had pups that would open up while they were real young. But once they got older and they started hunting with the older dogs and stuff, they wouldn't say nothing. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But when they were young, just the excitement and stuff, they would just want to open up. But once they realized the other dogs weren't barking, they, they never did say nothing. So, like you said, if you don't put them with barking dogs, then you got a good they chance of not. They don't never know true boy. <clears throat> yeah. They, uh, that's that that's something good that uh you know that that's some good information there for a lot of younger guys who are are getting into it because that's a another question that we had on here was about uh catching more Jerry, hogs yeah yeah Mister uh Mister Lulu Finley yeah. Jared you know, when I used to work at Pen at Earls I wouldn't work at least Jared was in there because I had zero worries <laughs> that's some good Jared, huh? that's good people man. Yeah, that that's my buddy right there. I I think the world of Jared. That, I don't think me and him has ever made it. We run our dogs together in the pen. Now Lily won't run with us because our dogs are crappy. She got good dogs, but yeah, me and Jared they <laughs> they, they, they trash nasty. I don't think we ever made it to the thirty second mark. We was all out because they were squealing. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. uh, that that's going to answer Jared's question right there. His question was, what's better? A slow, silent dog or a fast barking dog? Shit. Of course, yeah. a fast barking dog. I will take a fast open dog over a slow, silent dog any day because it's going to finish the race. You know, he's, he's going to push, he's going to get up there, if he, especially runs the catch. You know, you got something to put some heat on it. So, I mean, what's, your, what's your outlook on it? Well, look, even my stud dogs, they registered walkers. Cause that's what I got. That's the only way I could get it done to get the blood I wanted was males. They want they, they, these guys that run these field trials. They ain't gonna give you no good chips. And I wouldn't. They didn't give me nothing to start with. It's thousands of dollars in it. But anyway, everything better not cold trail. Mm-hmm. People said, "Oh, you don't never catch a hog around here with a dog that don't cold trail. I ain't saying my dog ain't cold trail. I'm saying he ain't barking on it. He ain't wallering it out like old tick. I ain't gonna say blue tick because I seen a couple of good blue ticks out of about 20,000. Yeah. And he ain't gonna down there be down there wallering that possum out, you know, just back and forth in the same little draw. Yeah, I don't, I don't like all that. Uh, now, does my dogs pass up hogs in the woods to, to get to a nothing? Yep. They sure do. Yeah. But it don't take them long. That that's the it main thing. That like we'll you said, that double digit, that double digit speed. Yeah, C- consistently, not not just when they're in a burst of run, but when they can push that's it, right. when they can push it thirteen miles an hour all day. That's what counts. Oh, and uh, you know, down there with Ralph Perkins and the. I ain't going to say nobody ever hunt on Fort Polk with a dog. You know, I say it was squirrel hunting. Yeah. But it, it's just open timber down there, and it don't take long to be 23, 24 miles on one race. And But now, look, that ain't in a line. Yeah. They didn't go to some Walmart. They went here, there, yonder, back, here, there, yonder, back, because it was probably shoats. <laughs> All right, there you go. Yeah. But, um, well, we're getting sidetracked a lot. We're going to run out of time. <laughs> uh, what other what other I hope that answers his yellow dog question is and he kind of answered himself is there's why he can't find a good yellow dog yeah. well what uh, the and, next thing I would my my question my to you know response to him would would be you know what style of dog is he looking for as well is he wanting a a, a cast dog a rough dog or or, or what you know because if he's wanting a more like a, a real rough stock dog. I know where to get some black mouth curs from North Texas that are, they're the truth. I mean, they, they will get it done. Yeah. That's uh, what I, in our country, I'd call that a little poaching dog. Yeah. And, and I mean, they, these son of guns, they will get out you under and go. But most of the time, if, like you said, you put them inside, they're going to get it stopped and they're going to get it quick. And, yeah. You know, you better carry your sewing kit and staple gun because they ain't backing off of shit. My, my advice to anybody hunting any kind of dog is find a family that uses them. Yes, that's the main thing. And I, I agree with you on that because, that, like I said, where I got these black mouth curs from uh, is Russell Holiday, and his family they, they've been they're they're from up around Weathersford, Texas, 
And they've been using the same line of dogs for years and years and years and years. They use them every day. And that's, that's how I got connected with them, you know, was to, or, or why I decided to get these. And I, I bought the whole litter. Yeah. And, and yes. I, I was not disappointed, not one bit. And, and these are, I think uh, we got one out there named Jughead. He's 11 months old, 12, might be a year old. He's about a year old now. And he's roughly 80 pounds. He's a big old blockhead yellow dog, you know. Uh, his brother's not quite as big as him. The the, the, the two little gyps, they're uh, roughly 50 pounds. Long-legged, oh, deep chest, and a hard yeah. mouth. Uh, yeah, I got a set of puppies right now, and I'm going I'm to just – I'm just going to sell them for hundred dollars a piece, first come, first serve. But they offer the Conan, the Barbarian, I got it, so red dogger. And the Jip is, the, the mama to them is the mama to them Jips that boys and bros has got over there for me. One of them's a year old, she's called Hog in six states. Yeah. That, uh, you talking honey, about? I call her. Who? Honey, the honey dog, Ryan Rankin. Honey, like yeah, Ryan honey. Rankin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh. I was trying to remember her name. I couldn't remember. I knew the one. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so every, when I put them on there and put the video, and they good looking puppies, but by God, they look scatterbred as I'll get out because they are on the mama side. Yeah. Uh, it goes back to that Greg Noah stuff well, if, if from back in the got, day. Is, if them but boys, about all the hound is bred out of them by now. If them boys need, so a, need a puppy, I, I highly suggest if they can get a pup from you and they're going to use one uh, to get one. I, I got one. Actually, I got it from Cody Jeff Coates. He sent it to us, but it was out of some of your stock and his stock both, right? Yeah, it was a little brindle jip that uh, they used in the woods and yeah. hastened one second in the youth bay, his first, the professor's first hog bay. That's it. And that dog, we call him Humpty. And, <laughs> and, and, I, and I had a video of him last year at like four and a half months old. And I mean, or five might, might have been five months old, and that son of a gun was baying like a fool. Uh, carried him, well, carried him hunting during deer season, and he decided he wanted to stay and hunt. He didn't want to come back in. You know what I'm saying? This is his first time going to the woods. I didn't have to coerce him. He didn't follow the old dogs. This son of a bitch is gone, and I couldn't get back to him till the next afternoon, and. When I got there, wound up killing a deer in front off of him, right there in front of him. He had done run that thing till it just it was walking. It wasn't even really running no more. He, and I had the game camera pictures front because I had a camera up on that hill, and I bet you there was probably forty different pictures where he would bring that thing back around in front of that camera about every hour or two. He and I mean he done that for about sixteen hours. So and he's. I don't, I don't know. Hell, he, he, he was probably a year old at the time. Maybe, maybe a year old at the time. So, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of some of the stuff that, uh, that, that's coming from your yard there. I ain't, I ain't got that's, no. Uh, that, yeah. That's off of General Lee, which is a 50 50 dog. Mm -hmm. Half Kimmer, the Bobtail Kimmers that we was talking about from the, from the Sally family. Yeah. You remember I bought that? And see, that's where I was going with this. When you go up to these people, it, this is where etiquette comes in. You befriend these people because you want something from them, and they know it. Yes. What'd you do? Did you try to ask? Did you ask them? Because here's what people ask me about my Conan puppies. Well, are they out of good dogs? <laughs> you know what I respond? You know me. You know, hell no. Why in the hell would I want to breed good dogs? Yeah, that, I don't make no you damn know? sense. Yeah, you know, I like buying forty dollars sag dog feed to feed somebody won't leave my feet. Yeah, come on, I get plum offended. So what would you do? You didn't ask them no questions. They said you want puppy. You bought the whole litter. Yep. And you know for a fact when I went and got the other yellow ones, you got. Oh yeah. What did you, I do? Me and Mister King. Litter. Uh, Andrew, yeah, about eleven or thirteen. How many they had? It was a damn box full of them. And uh, that's that. The, I got the mate to it. That's the one that I put on Facebook the other day with nine holes in him. Yep. And they ain't a year old yet. No. Or they might and, be. And that one out there, uh, old Mo, that son of a bitch, he'll bay and bay and bay. And when he gets tired, he'll just hang it. You know, and, and like, this is all by itself. They ain't had no other dogs to influence him or to teach him or to show him. Well, I, we don't we don't typically use an older dog to start a puppy. I don't feel that you should no. have to do that. You know, I even train them to follow. You know, I I don't need a me too dog. I need a dog at a. That's right. 
That's right. And and that's just the difference, you know, and I don't know, I guess the older I get, when I was younger, man, it was so easy to take three or four puppies and throw them out there with a, a whole pack of dogs and just let them go ape shit. But then like, you, you know, you get a bunch of dogs that are just following and, and help dogs. I don't need no damn yeah. help dogs. I need to grab any dog on my yard and be able to go do what I need to do. Getting, getting back to etiquette one time, man, you know, everybody thought I own Crow. If you didn't know, if you wasn't in our little circle, you thought that I own Crow and Randy own Goose. And oh, okay. anyway, we, um, I think we won our old two dog that year. I didn't, we didn't do nothing. <laughs> this was both Randy the Rail dog. But I, I, you know, I was running Crow and we come out of there after winning, uh, cause we won it. And then the next year we won second and, Crow spun out because he got hit in the nose, started bleeding, and never quit bleeding, and he died 10 days later. He had oh. cancer in his nose. Uh, Crow spun out four times without stopping. He ain't spun out four times in his life, you know, so we knew something in the blood. But anyway, he had cancer in the nose, and we buried him, and boy, we lost a good in that day. But when I come out of there, this boy from Mississippi run up to me. He said, Mr. No offense, but you got the best help dog in the world. <laughs> he thought I was playing when I reached for that case. I was from the cut. Hey, man. I, I, man. I bet. I'm feeling like Randy's leading the help. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. You know what's going on, you know, but hey, you guys the real man. You get him on this podcast, you asking about me reaching for my knife at Earl's. I mean, but I thought I was playing, but I wasn't. Yeah. I was. I kind of just had to walk off to keep him getting in trouble, but. Uh, what happened to the rest of them yellow puppies you got from me that night? Listen, I was I was supposed to <laughs> shit. The when the way it all worked out, everybody was gonna get one apiece, you know. And I don't know, some guy named Pat Lewin apparently stuck a couple of more of them in my box or or told the boys <laughs> to. I don't know, but I came home with a damn pack of them. I think we had three of them. Yeah, we had three of them all together. And well, I know what it was. I think uh, one of the Andrews boys was going to get another one, and they didn't have no room. And I told him, I said, well, I, you know, we'll keep it or whatever. might have been Rodney. I think it was Rodney. That's what it was. Anyway, Rodney just wanted, Rodney just wanted the chip puppy. It was only one female, yeah, about 10 or male. That's it. And, and <laughs> we had these other ones. And let me tell you, they would sit out there and bathe their water bowl all day long. I'm talking about they would just sit there, and, and, and they'd be circled around that some bitch. And they were so damn wild. I mean, you talking about rough? They had to fight before they would eat. And, and listen, if if we, we put them all in the same kennel, if you fed fed them, they they would t they would eat a little bit and they'd fight. Then they take turns eating and they fight. Well, so we started separating them. And when you fed them, guess what? They wouldn't eat. Literally, would not touch their food. So we had to put them back in there together and let them fight. And then they'd all have a party and bathe the hell out of it after it was over. I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life. I started a good jip for GW off of that Tango and Ellie, yeah. I think. I think that's what she was off of. She didn't know she was a cur dog. I got her real young and just cast her with the walkers. She never not cast it. But I had two more jips there. I mean, I think I started 53 that month. Good I mean, I was I was I was living over in my daddy's house, single, and I had them kids coming by. When I say kids, I'm talking about twenty year old boy. I know, yeah. so 20, 22, 23 years. So they'd have a puppy or two, and they'd want. I said, "Well, let's go." I got them. I got hogs. Me and Gene Reynolds, instead of hogs, we wouldn't catch none of them. We just running them every day, and I, I'd go back over and eat them and feed them. It was. It was bigger than shows, 80 or ninety pounds, but they was all about that yeah. with a couple of two hundred pound boars hanging around and a big bar hog. And uh, we would just bay them up and we'd leave. Well, hell, it was August. <laughs> oh, Lord. When Yeah, 4 o'clock in the evening, it was about 104. And GW had come pick his jip up. And I said, well, let me show you. I knew I knew about where them hogs was at. I started easing up that road. And, hey, them three jips went out there, 100 and some degrees, and fell baited about 80 yards. It broke, come across that road. And uh, we bulldogged them and got them <laughs> caught. And, uh. I said, I tell you what, you, you can just have them all. I ain't got, one of them was a full Catahoula off of Mr. Lloyd Carpenter's dog. 
You know what I'm talking about, Mr. Lloyd Carpenter, the black guy? Yeah. Uh, I, I ain't talking about it because he's black. Just so you know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. He yeah. always had really good man, good dog man. It was, it was a rancher cat uh, for something him and Chris Anson did. And the other one was a mate to this Pebbles Jip, the mama of these puppies. And GW boy, he's lit the woods on fire with these with these three bitches. And, but as far as, and I told him, I said, you cannot. My dogs is funny. Uh, they ain't for everybody. Uh, I think one of them killed the other two. But he had them about 18 months before it happened, but it was bound to happen. And she killed the other two and ate half of one. I don't know what I do. <laughs> I don't, they just, <laughs> they a tad bit fair. They, they are. And, and those three I was talking about out of those, uh, there's only one of them still alive. And, and it's making a damn good hand. But it is insane. <laughs> so, yeah, but you didn't have to kill the other two for not starting. Oh hell no! I no 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 no. Party, didn't you? No, they they listen. They ain't. We ain't had no no issues at all. Uh, with these little yellow dogs at all. I mean they they've come on pretty good. I, I knew the way y'all hunted a little bit different the way I hunt. Geographical location is paramount when you're trying to, yes. you know, don't come here wanting some of these straight Julys or July walkers if you're hunting a little bit. Of, I mean, this is Piney Wood National Forest dogs. Yep. Uh, big blocks. When I say big blocks, I ain't talking about 1,200 acres. I'm talking about 12,000, and guess what? You're exactly. still going to get off the Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's coming to my last thing and something I had to teach Ed Morris. Uh, which you ain't gonna teach Ed a whole lot. <laughs> he just pays attention and grins. Yeah. Uh, when you run these kind of dogs, you got to be a little closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your your etiquette has to be on par. Because guess where you fixing to be? On somebody Everywhere else's. Everywhere you, my man. Yep. Look, I ain't gonna get too much into it. But Sunday we caught seven hogs. Nobody around us caught anything. Uh, and I didn't. And I didn't run a dog. But every dog that was on the ground either came from me or came off of the stuff they got from me and bred it themselves. Uh, not saying my stuff's any better than anybody else's, but you just ain't going to put it. got about 90 degrees after, you know, 80-something. Them cur dogs ain't going to stay with them walker dogs. They just, when it gets hot, if you got one, that will call me. I got a pocket full of money. I want to see it, and I want to <laughs> own that unit. Or I want to just breed it one time. Yeah. <laughs> we had a little altercation where a man's dog put with them. They went about five miles as a crow flies and bayed up. And then the dogs that was bayed up, they don't, they a little tad bit rough on the break. I mean, they don't, usually when you bay one with them, you got him. Yeah. And uh, the bay broke. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't go around there on the black tie because me and Mr. Green James, I just, I ain't, I just, he wouldn't my dogs. That's right. <laughs> I don't mean if they asked me to, but I just stayed right there. And uh, the race come back in there. I watched them on the Garmin and he had done got three o'clock. So I had that, that 95 Winchester 30 out six. When he hit that, hit that little opening in that cut over, I just went ahead and spooled him up. And we were still sitting there talking about 15 minutes after it all happened. And here come an old yellow dog about to have a heart attack. Well, <laughs> more of a red dog, and he was bad fat. So I got him some water, and I was kind of concerned. And I looked at the collar, and I I can't see. Uh, I actually didn't catch the dog. Them kid did. And I said, well, I know that kid. But it wasn't. It was his uncle. And I I called him on the phone. I said, he Accused me of trying to steal his dog and turn his, turning his tracking collar off. And his dog ain't never come that far. And here I am with no filter. I said, well, probably because he ain't never had, he ain't never had nothing he could follow that far. <laughs> I didn't mean him bad. I just mean it because they walk her dogs. They go a long way. Yeah. Not that they're better than him. You know, I don't know, but anyway, the man was mad. But to say this, proper etiquette got us on common ground now. There and, you go. uh, if I, I'm gonna get my glasses and I'm gonna read that collar a little better. And uh, if it's his dog, I'm not gonna pick it up. Yeah. That's the deal me and him got. He don't want nobody picking his dog up. There you go. If he gets run over on the highway, that's on him. But I told him if you do see mine and he don't bite you, 
Grab Pick him, him up. Grab him. Yeah, because yeah. there's a one hundred percent chance he's supposed to get bit. And <laughs> nobody can <laughs> Hey look, I went to put General Lee in the bay and he's just a puppy, just a puppy man hurls. You know, they had twenty one puppies a year. I entered it, it was ninety nine. I mean <laughs> had six rounds of bay offs in the puppy bay. Yeah. But uh, I ran a nine nine because my hog laid down in the mud and somebody made a noise in the back. Well, I done run my dog on the outside. I done run deer and hog with him all winter. Killed a few squirrels with him. Mm -hmm. Hell, he was, he was starting other dogs. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, man, General Lee. He's, he's a house dog. He's a house boat. I think so. Well, he, hell, he was, he was helping start other puppies too, wasn't he? And he was still a damn yeah. puppy. Yeah, I put him in the bay pen at Slade's. He must have been. He couldn't have been very old because he, he must have been four four months old, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I made him. They said the hog was, was bad, so I made him a vest out of duct tape and bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah. And he, he's got this old curl tail. I don't know where that comes from. And Miss June Cantrell, she said, that tail. I said, yes, ma'am, I breathe that into him. Mm -hmm. She said, well, what for? I said, well, when I give him a bath, I hang him on the clothesline like possums. <laughs> <laughs> She dragged the wheel me and I, got, I gave Miss, Miss Cantrell some space. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and me and Miss Teresa and Mr. Marlin, we they thought that was pretty entertaining. But yeah. And another general he just went out there with his little bubble wrap and just jacked it back for about 30 seconds and he just come right back to me in a hard run, you know. Oh, yeah. I wasn't after him. He just didn't know. He, he was just happy to be there. But yep. so so I run him in the two dog and we made the first round of bayoffs. I don't even remember, I think I put him with the old rowdy dog I had. They come from Rusty Mayshore, but it, Tyler Gresham is the breeder. Yeah. Well, Rowdy done got about 10, and I ended back up with him. So I met that middle boy, not Slade, and not, not, not nephew Slade, and the little one. <laughs> you <laughs> wanted like being cows. Me and him, we going to be in cows together for a living when he gets a little bigger. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, uh, uh, Tyler's? Yeah. It was uh, that middle boy, and I think he won some merchandise with old Rowdy. Yeah. Uh, Rowdy's really just a two dog. If a hog don't fight him, he loses interest. But uh, hey, the youth made, and they. He my dog. I gave it to that kid. That's it. He led him up there and showed him all by himself. So go. him and his brother that had the little incident on the four wheeler, they yeah. both left off. I got a good picture in between them there. Was sliding on the side, making sure that nobody act up. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> they both had some merchandise when we left there, and that's, that's, and that's what it's about. It you is. Take, uh, I, JJ Calvin taught me that with Remy and that old white jeep he had. He didn't sell it to nobody. He found him a kid that didn't have a dog. Yep. And that's the same way I did Jeff Coach with where no. I ain't looking here. I ain't pumping Uncle Pat up today. No, no. I'm just saying, a, hey, that, that's you guys have got do. these old dogs. <clears throat> you guys got these old pro dogs. It's pro dang. And they, they, they can't make it. That was Rowdy's problem. And Tyler, they had eight come back in the bay off, I think, or ten. And he was four of them. But yeah, it's 100 yeah. degrees. He quit. Yeah. And about the fourth round of he just ain't there. He ain't got, you know, he ain't got no teeth. He's old. Yep. He's like me. I'm good for about a round or two. And, and, and you know, <laughs> like, I'm on the way side, it, it's, it's one of them deals where, you know, I've, I've been like, I've had guys like yourself that's gifted me puppies and, and young dogs. And, and I've had some guys that's, that's give me old dogs that were finished in the woods, you know, or right. what, what people would call a finished dog. Uh, and so that's what I started doing now that I mess with all these pups and these young dogs. The dogs that I've got on the yard that are six, eight, ten years old, I started giving them to young guys who are just getting started and need a good, solid dog. And I wish more people would do that. Uh, they could learn a lot by, by watching you and uh, the actions that you do, the way, like you said, and these other guys, they, they give to these kids – and if everybody would take just a little bit of that into account, man, it'd be so much better. Instead of trying to make a damn dollar. He, he, here's what, here's a, if I don't pass any little gems off to nobody, this here's the truth. I growed up with dogs. But your old men ain't telling you, it ain't, yeah, they ain't telling you nothing, partner. Yep. You just go over there and you be quiet and you watch what they do. The yep. Bible says to get what they got, you got to be have done what they've done. If you want to do more than, if you want more than what they got, you got to do more than they've done. Yep. 
But at least you get to where they're at. The guys that's beating y'all and not running y'all. Don't ask, don't come at me and ask me as them dogs any good. Yeah. I can promise you. I don't like to get out run. Hey, I had like to hunt. I had to hunt with Jake. And Zach Alford said it best. You give him one bullet, he'll shoot you ten times with it. <laughs> you you can't go down there barefooted. Mm -hmm. So yes, they're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So getting back to the to the General Lee story, he bit James Andrews going into the pen. <laughs> he bit Michael Bell in the pen. I told him not to run in there. I can call my dog off. And I probably he probably would have won a trophy or two. But the more he's older, he got the mirror he got, so I just afraid he's gonna bite somebody. But I made the bay off for Rowdy. The first round. I can't get past four minutes with nothing. Let me put this easy. I can't get past four minutes doing nothing either. <laughs> well, we don't keep this simple. That's it. But I left there, and three weeks later, I was with Shannon Rasker and uh, Buster Dempsey and beat out Texas in the Fox pen. And uh, they got that's where uh, Streaking Guinea, Smoking Guinea, D, and all them. These they, hey, these are dog men. Yeah. These are my daddy's friends. These are. Uh, okay. I did not run them, but they did not run me neither. Yeah, okay. So I, we just started messing around going to some of the fox pens and stuff the past couple years, and it's a it's a different deal. There's no doubt. That, yes. That's a whole different animal than than other competitions. Well, uh, I, that, yeah, that animal yeah, what, per, that that animal will perform outside as well as inside. It don't matter. And yeah. I learned a lot, just like you said, just kind of sitting back and watching. And I, so, so when I yeah, when I started breeding the walkers into them, yeah, Daddy had forty, fifty, sixty hounds at all times. So I had an unlimited supply, but I didn't use his because he liked them all night dogs. Yeah, I like I like so. The first couple of times I tried it, I got I did pretty good, but I was using one day field trialers. Okay. okay, I'm not talking bad about nobody. I ain't saying nobody does nothing. I'll just say this. You can put a chemical in a needle and make something do something for three or four hours. That's exactly right. I, I say, yep. That's one of them things I learned while I was down there, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I so pulled, if some bitches know, was if everywhere, you, boy. Woo. Hey, look, man, one for one for them and two for me back in the day. I'm telling you, that that, that shit, we was up all night. I was like, what time they starting? Hell, we would, they weren't going to start till 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. So, okay, so, so my advice to you guys thinking about it, go to your three-day people, your three-day hunt people. Yeah. You know, that's the difference in a team roper and a rodeo hand. Mm-hmm. You got three rounds of it. That 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 consistency. The only three, the only thing you can breed for in a dog is consistency. That one hitter quitter, he'll be like Secretariat. He's an anomaly. He will never produce after his own kind. Yep. But you got that old dog that's winning you third place every time. Yep. And he giving you everything he got every time. Mm, that's, Just that's call the and bring that good jip to him. And just let them be put, you know, like the acorn. It's all, it's going to already be in there. Just get out of their way. So saying that to say this, Mr. John Blanton for Showtime, he owned two stud dogs, KP and JP, and they was in the top two or three producers. They were three-day dogs. KP always placed higher. They, they feel champions. Well, my buddy Jeff brought away. I rode up with him. He passed away. He had bought JP from Mr. Blanton. Yeah. Mr. Blanton, I don't think Mr. Blanton would sell him KP, although Jeff was crying when he had a car wreck and, and passed away. So so a guy from South Carolina or North Carolina, I can't think of it, give uh, give the family 10 or 12, I don't know, more thousands of dollars than I got. And he's done one side by side and all kind of stuff with these puppies off of JP. And John swears up and down that KP is a better producer. I got saying that to say, you saying that to say this? There you go. I'm fixing to stand KP uh, at Four L Kennels for Mr. Blanton. If y'all want to breed to him, I think he wants two hundred fifty dollars 
and uh, he'll be at my kennels in Louisiana, not in Texas. That'll be a hell of a, uh, that's a, that's a good $250 spent. I've got, I've, I've got a dog from Mr. John out here that, that he bred up and a uh, young dog, um, not real young, but he, you know, he's old enough now. He needs to be pushing real good. And uh, I think he's won, he's placed in two or three, three day hunts. Uh, it, you know, his very first ones. And so that's, that's why I was interested in him. Like you said, you know, yeah. you get something that's got a lot of bottom to it. That's, that's, that's how you get it. That, yeah, that, that giving you that and, and, and a different, and JP, and JP was, a, I saw him run. Uh, JP was a little faster. Yeah. But JP was honest. Like he was more of a, that old timey run to catch track running machine. JP was kind of more like, I like them, uh, run down the road, get it known, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> catch me if you can. Uh, old man said, you won that ten thousand dollar money hunt, no sir. Another guy won it, but it was my dog. But she come down the road and grabbed it. I said, Mister, uh, I don't care if she swung from a vine. They not gonna ask me at Walmart because we spent the money when I spent this five thousand dollars on how I got it or what my dog did to do it. I don't care if she swung from a vine like Tarzan, as long as she got it. Yeah. <laughs> whatever it yeah, whatever it takes. And, that, oh. and that's the consistency factor you're looking at is, right. is when you're turning out all these dogs and, you know, they're coming from, from your old lineage. And when you send a dog, a puppy to me and Nathan and uh, Mr. Andrews and then uh, Carter and Ryan and all them and all these pups are turning out because they can't, they you know, the, the bloodline goes back to originally to you. Well, you're doing something right. I don't know. You, you do God something. just takes care of the ignorant. That's all I'm going to say. God takes care of the ignorant. <laughs> if somebody wants to know what I'm doing, just be here in the morning because I'm not working. I'm 50 years old. Texas unemployment is $577. <laughs> now, I ain't going to take off during the winter. I'm going to work during all them deer seasons and stuff. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't want to be in the woods with a bunch of people, and I'm not just gonna go hunting with anybody. Nothing against none of y'all, but <laughs> a lot of times I'm just gonna run deer. Yeah, you know, because I'm just trying to teach them to get their head up. That's right. Oh, uh, that, that's what we we had a little deer race this this morning ourselves. I, I, I know to some people they they want to beat on them and all this. Oh. Uh, I can tell you, I can stop any dog you got from running a deer. Show up, show up here five days in a row, because I got one of these field trial dogs that'll pull his head off. That 100 degrees don't bother this Walker dog. If you got a cur dog, a cur dog running a deer, just cast him with his cur dog. But that third day, he'll go to bed and all the tree and squirrel. He don't <laughs> want no more of that Walker dogs. I promise you. And that's how I really, I mean, I just run him to death. Yeah. Did you see that video I posted that July? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that puppy finally hooked up. I ain't had no tracking collar on him. He yeah. didn't belong to me. Known to Charles, the champ. I call Charles Kelp the champ. The champ. He, he is truly the champ. Um, I won fast, fastest catch out with this yellow dog last year at Earl's. And this year, Charles won fifth in the one dog with him. And almost, <laughs> and almost won the, uh, what do you call it? The best of the best one. But the hog knocked the jaw out, out of socket. Yeah. And he slung his head three times. And when he went back in, he went back to Bay in, but he still had a 9-7. Yeah. Which I got back to the judge and I, you know, and I was wanting to, uh, uh, as the disciples say, drop fire like Elijah did. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I feel like that's when I look, you got to have rules, and we knew that was one of the rules before we started, so I couldn't really gripe. But that's right. Uh, but that, y'all uh, seen y'all's questions in? I I hope this was entertaining. I don't know. Yeah, no. If I, we even I, talked I about it, it, I think it's I think it's good. Uh, like you said, I, I what, what what we're doing here, you know, we're getting to we're getting to talk. About you know the hunting deal, the dogs and all that. While we're getting to answer some questions, being informative, uh, hopefully, you know uh, these these guys can can take the knowledge that you're dropping and absorb it. Because I mean, it, 
to some people, they're not going to fully understand what you're saying until 10 years from now. And they're going to kick back and they're going to be like, oh, shit, now I get it. You know, Carter said, Carter Schultz. <laughs> I swear to God, I must have got drunk. How old is Carter? Because I used to drink. I see, you know, how old is Carter? See, like, really beat my, it, I mean, he's got that little old cop mustache. I think he's a little narc or something. I don't know what he is. <laughs> that little cop mustache. He looks like he's been on those chips. And, uh, mustache. My, he's like he's on chips. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to give him a motorcycle, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then there's Ryan over there. The first time I've ever seen him, he had on a baby blue shirt, and he looked just like Napoleon Dynamite's Uncle Rico. Yeah. And come to find out, he did play football. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no champion team, whatever. I mean, yeah. I called him Uncle Rico before I ever knew he, he knew, how to, knew what a football looked like. Oh, my God. But uh, I'm going to tell y'all guys out there, y'all, I talk about my dogs a lot, whatever, because that's what I know. I don't know your dog, or I talk about it. So I talk about my dogs. I'm going to tell y'all all that right, right now. I'm not conceited or better. You know, all got better dogs than I do. Because once he gets about seven, eight months old, I give him away or get rid of him. I hunt an old dog I got from Monica because he bit people. I say that he's really a good bred dog. Um, <laughs> but he was two or three years old before I put him in the woods. Monica was like, put him in. I mean, he knew how to run game. He just bit people. And but he came off of an old dog that come from me. I got them from Greg Noah too. And he was a Crockett plot off of Crockett's tiger, tiger, whatever. I don't know all that. I just know I was drinking a lot in them days. And I come back to Arkansas and Cliff G, he was mad at me because I was buying the whole litters. Because that's how you do it. And he was mad because I had bought four or five whole litters and was headed back. And Greg called me and says, you know old Cliff's a good guy. I said, well, I don't know him from nobody. He said, well, he's friends with Jeremy Sullivan. Oh, I know Jeremy the dog brander. He was the original Uncle Earl's dog brander. Yeah. And the president of the Arkansas Dog Federation or whatever it is. So I swung up through Arkansas. I didn't. I wasn't really wanting to go home. I was married to an ugly woman at the time. And it had really sucked <laughs> the life out of me. So and she told me not to come home with no dogs. So I had like 37 puppies and an extra dog box I bought off some junk sale on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> and so I swung by up there and let um, Cliff G have a jeep puppy. Yeah. That's what he wanted. That's just get whatever you want. And I couldn't even remember what I had gave for him. John Paul while he was driving. Well, it was pretty buck wild back in them days. And I, I think I might have sold it to him for an ice cream cone at Dairy Queen. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I don't know. But they say she made one of the best dogs ever come out of Arkansas. They still talking about her. So... But he's a lot better dog man than me. I never really did nothing with mine. I run some bear with him, but he was a full plot. But he's registered in the tree dog association because he's buckskin brindle. Huh. And um, I just never really paid him no attention because I, I had 154 dogs at the time. Good and Lord, uh, 154 dogs. I kind of forgot about him, so we entered a St. Jude's Hog Tournament. So the way we used to do the Hog Tournament, this is before you could go in them dumps and them feedlots. I'm not downing you boys, I, but I did see a video of the dump down in South of East Texas yeah. of a guy up a tree and the bulldog's in a tree with him because it's 75 hogs over 200 trying to get to him. Yeah. I'm glad you won your belt buckle. <laughs> but you don't, you know, I mean... It, it ain't, it ain't it the same. It ain't the same. It ain't, it ain't the same thing. No. Uh, I don't give a damn what how they say it. It ain't the same. You still got to be a pretty good hog catching man to catch them. Y'all, hey, look, my hat's off to y'all. But at the end of the day, we free casting. That's it. Uh, this past Sunday, we caught seven. I don't know how many shoats and peas they caught. I went to Pentecostal Church, though, I tell you. Yeah, you was telling me something about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I walk, I walk, I'm, I'm, I'm running a little bit late because there's some cows out, but I've made a person a promise. And one thing you'll learn about me is I've been homeless and hungry and broke, but I always had my word. Mm -hmm. And I had to give these people my word. And uh, they said, well, you can just go the evening. No, I'm going now. I told you now I'm going to. Well, then my my neighbor calls me. Hey, there's some cows out in the road. Oh, I got 15 minutes. I go up there. I can't get close enough to them to get video, but I know they're not ours because they're not. I mean, they just, they're not all chopper cows. I say yeah. ours. I don't own no cows, but I look after hundreds of heads. 
<laughs> when he's at the rig, I'm tending to this man's stuff, you know, because I love him like a brother. But we cast it on his property, so I'm, you know, hey, I'm taking care of him. I, uh, I don't care where he's at for Thanksgiving. He's got a pretty bird coming. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. <laughs> so I uh, uh, finally got the video. It ended up being about seven, eight minutes for church. It's already sang it in there. Yeah, uh, Pentecost was evidently sang a lot. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, they had this uh, guy in this, like in the front, in a circle, and he looked like a police, off duty police, posing as a security guard, and some guy's talking to him. Uh. <laughs> well, I walk in. I usually go to the black church. I ain't gonna lie. So I'm used to, uh, hey, man. Oh, because yeah. they're probably wondering why I'm there in this cowboy hat and these $2,500 gator boots, you know? Yes. Uh, uh, so I don't get nothing from them. So I find it, and you can hear the singing. It's loud. By God, it's loud. And uh, I said, where do I need to go? I'm new here. And they said, right through this door. You can't hear that music? I said, yes, sir, but I, need, I lied. I said, I've never been to church before. You know, I didn't know what was going on in there. <laughs> I mean, uh, what I'm trying to tell you in a nice way is, if you're going to be the door greeter, you don't need to snub me when I come in. That's right. So, I, uh, if you want this church to grow. So, I go in there, and there's this usher standing there, and he just looks at me and grins and goes back to standing. Well, after about a minute, when he ain't like, welcome to the church, or how can I help you or nothing, I say, hey, call. <laughs> Why would black folks say that around here? Because I meant it. Because I meant it. Yeah. Uh, and I finally uh, went to my left, and that pew had reserved on it. I was like, oh my God. Oh. Reserved. For who? Back row? I said, must have a few Baptists sleep, sneaking in here. <laughs> if they were the back row seat, <laughs> you who can't be funny again. So I finally went around the other side, and there was this black lady holding a little baby. And I sat beside her, and, and uh, it wouldn't. My first impression wasn't very much, mm -hmm. but uh, the preacher actually knew the Bible a little bit, which is Pentecost. I mean, they full gospel, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I went to leave. Well, they knew who I was by then. They hear me up laughing uh, because that usher done went and told everybody what I said, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There from now on, he's he's asking some, you know, hey, yeah, you know, he's gonna be a little more. Welcome. He's gonna he's gonna be a better host. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the house of the Lord. You That's know? right. Sit where you like. <laughs> Evidently, it wouldn't run what you brought because every back seat was already reserved. So I didn't want to, you know, it's my first day. I didn't want to step on any toes. Yeah. Oh. So I left the I, I I left the race and uh, put some on Facebook about Holy Ghost towns and. But we do indeed have dominion over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. And believe it or not, I'm a, my faith is very, very strong. Yes. So you can't believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and not believe that God didn't give us dominion over every creeping thing on the earth and even the fish. So on my way to church, I just went ahead and declared my dominion over all of them the big bowls of the woods mm -hmm. and the dogs to do right. That's it. And uh, they call biggest thing they call while I was gone is a 175 pound pregnant sow. And when I got back, I told them that's probably the only thing they could catch because couldn't run. <laughs> <laughs> they run in my dogs anyway. I bring the dogs anyway. I was just clowning a little bit. But uh show you how God worked. Uh, I wasn't even thinking about it when I shot I shot that hog, but I was just ready to quit, and they was ready to quit. And uh, old boy weighed about 210 pounds. He didn't have no teeth in his head. He had teeth of a sow. He was just really fat. Yeah. Now, you reckon about that, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we do have dominion. Exercise your dominion. Yeah, I agree. But, but don't come in here taking you fixing to make a dog with your dominion. And you're riding on a chihuahua's worth of faith. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You ain't going to have no goose or no crow. Or you got to have something to work with. Houses, lip or coon dog or South Fork bear squirrel dog, Kimmer, or whatever a duck dog world champion name is, and old Banjo, the mountain cur, or whatever. That's it. Or, or the KP dog of John Blanton's. And you're not going to have that riding on a beagle's worth of faith. I, I agree. Now, now I'm going to get bad mail from the beagle people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the only people 
people that ever why my daddy's coyotes out in one day, 16, and a 200-acre pen was the Beagle World Finals field trial. Really? Be- that, Beagles. Said was the meanest, that was the meanest damn things he had ever seen in his entire life, and they would never host another field trial no, in his place. I never, right. I never, I mean, I know I've had beagles and stuff. But and I know now these mean, beagles but... look like little trigs to me now. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say they was a little, a little rough, huh? And it was about 14 inch shade going under them bushes. Damn. I wasn't down there, but I know daddy hosted one beagle field trial and he said he never again because his pocketbook couldn't handle <laughs> what the beagles could turn out. <laughs> so I often thought about finding one of those. And bring it to a cur dog. Yeah. Because it's obviously running the cage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ain't no doubt. You get something that's that rough with a nose like that, hell. Uh, if, if, so, you, if you can keep the damn stamina with it, you'll be in shape. That's right. You know, everybody thinks that, you know, I've heard people say, that old run to catch saying you got, that's not my saying. Sp- explain, explain run to catch. Because there, okay. there's been people that ask me, and I explain it best I can, but. Explain it, what it is, and, and what it means. Okay. Every Wednesday night, Daddy Sox Pen was closed. Because we were in cat dogs on the outside. Uh-huh. And I ain't talking about mountain lions. I'm talking about dry ground bobcat. Mm-hmm. And it's hog dogs. I ain't talking bad about the hog dogs because I'm one myself. we the bottom of the barrel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dry ground cat dog men. At the top. As far as dog men go, I ain't saying they ain't some good dog men in the hog dog world, but as a whole. Because it's too easy to take granddaddy's cow dog out there and walk him through the woods till the hog jumps up and you catch him. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. The most discriminate, and I don't think some people I was hunting with understood that. Until we went to Mississippi over there with Logan Campbell, and I met Mr. Dan Lewis uh, from Northern California uh, that had a handle. He he had moved to Oklahoma and swapped his trigs over to hogs from from fox and cat and all that. He's running hogs with him. When right. it, when his bulldog took a step, or when he took a step, his bulldog took a step. He had no lead on that dog. Yes, sir. A dry ground cat dog man don't even own a lead, probably. I ain't yeah. never seen one. No, he talk, told that dog what to do, and he did it. No matter what was going on in his world. <laughs> it could be a race right there, or a bait right there. So, my daddy knew Finley, Clay, the, uh, Mike Rook. Uh, I'm not sure if Boo Kemp ever come, but he's from South Texas. Uh if you want to see a good picture of Mr. Boo, ask Monica Willis for the one where there's a mountain lion in a mesquite bush and Boo swinging off its tail trying to drag it out of the tree. Hey. Back in the younger day, yeah, Mr. Boo. That's a, yeah, but, I want to I want to get with him and, and do and talk with him some. Hey, 90, yeah, you better. He's 90-something. But the one I remember most is my hero, Henry McIntyre. Oh, yeah. And you look him up on Facebook. Oh, I, I know. I mean, you do. And that's where I got the saying from because he said it all the time. Yep. And they asked him, what does it take to make a good hound? He said, oh, Lord, big heart and tough feet. Yep. And he's got to run to MF and catch. Yes, sir. And, and, and what they mean by catch is bring him to bay. Yes. It ain't nothing to do with teeth. Exactly. I tried to explain that. It's not about biting or catching and holding. It's the capture of the animal, to catch the animal, to 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 bring it to bay, to bring it to tree or or whatever, for us to be able to capture the animal. To walk up there and look at him. That's it. For us to be able to do that every time that, that dog runs to catch. That that's why uh, okay. like Joe Troyer in New Mexico, Little Joe's Guide Service, yep. top notch guys, dry ground, mountain lion, bears, uh, oh God, my buddy up there, I can't even think of his name right now. I can see his face, and he's a top notch guy, and I hunted with him quite a bit up there. But I can't think of his name. Say my, but they said what they say when they caught two bears today. Yep, treed and freed, treed and freed. Yep. Uh, Runs the catch just makes means makes him turn around and look at the hounds instead of running. That, that's right. 
But that's it's what that mutual got. respect thing we were talking about earlier. The, you know, them them dogs respect it enough not to, you know, just to jump on it and maul it. And then the the game that it's pursuing, after a while, it respects it enough to know that, hey, they're not giving up and they're not going to quit. So we got to come to an agreement. So they're going they're going to take a bay. Yeah. Um I'm not really qualified to answer that because I'm not the dog man. I'm not the dog man that you can't dog man or I'll be honest with you. Hugh Gibson told me one time, he, I don't know, you didn't remember him. He was from Shelbyville. He was one of the most discriminating dog men and boy, he was honoring. Miss Nora was where his wife was really the dog man. He put on hog bags there. Jake can tell you a lot about him. The older people, you know, but he, uh, he won it no matter what he did. Whether it was hog band, or uh, Fox pen field trialing. He went to Louisiana State with old dog Brown's quick, which was I think was old like a red dog. But he ate supper at our house for 30 years, I know of, every Wednesday night that he could. And a lot of times it'd be four or five more of the greats around there. And uh, my daddy never owned cat dogs. He just went with them yeah. because we had to spot, see. And uh, it's my favorite, but I walk too much. I talk too much. I'm too loud. I'm obnoxious. <laughs> and I don't know when to shut up. And I don't even know uh, what he'd tell me. If I'd ever learned even how to snap a lead on a dog, I'd be dangerous, he told me. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and that's the way the old people used to talk to you. Yeah. But I just grinned because he didn't understand. I was watching every move. I was, I was listening to him to understand and not respond. So you young guys out there, even your older ones, everything in your life will improve if you listen to understand instead of respond. Yep. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Cause it's, I don't know. I don't know where in the hell that come from. That sounded way that, too intelligent. That, that was. <laughs> that, that, I mean, honestly, that's 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 deep. Uh, but there's so many. Well, there's so many people, like you just said. When you put it like that, even I even caught myself there to stop, and it's like you know, if you will listen to understand what somebody's talking about, pay attention instead of just listening to 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 say, well, no, you're wrong about this, or this is what I think, or blah blah blah. Shut the hell up, and listen. We call we call that a asshole. Yeah. Cause they ask you a question, and no matter what you tell them, they go to, like, are you back with you? No, wait a minute there, partner. Yeah. You asked me a question, I gave you my opinion or my perspective. When I when I wrote the blurb for, um, who would have thought that book would have made the best sellers list, but it did. Oh, it's pretty sure. Sh- it's a yeah. little sharper than it looks, okay? i tell you what, so I'm, I'm proud of that. Book, that it's some gems in there. And he talked a lot about my daddy. Uh, Ed got to spend some time with him. But uh, when I wrote the blurb, I put, from Ed's perspective, this book is written from Ed's perspective. Nothing in here is concrete because I can't write a fact about an animal that will eat crap and breed his mama yeah. in the same way. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to do anything, partner. But this is from my perspective. So if you ask me a question, just just listen to the answer. If you don't agree with it, I don't care. It's, I'm being, I'm being, really what I had to do, especially when young boys ask me what I think about their dog, I had to come up with this answer. <laughs> If you if he suits you, he suits me. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I'm thinking you really want to know the truth. Yeah, yeah. That that can and be tough. It is. We we ran into that last year uh, with a, <laughs> with a guy, and and I and look, it, like you said, you, I don't I don't like calling people out or anything like that. But the guy knows who it is. He asked a lot of questions, and he he paid attention on a lot of things, but a lot of things he didn't. And he would ask about his dog. Well, what about my dog doing this? Or, or my dog did this or this and that, blah, blah, blah. I asked him one night, we were we were hunting a tournament. I said, uh, you ever called any dogs? He said, no. I said, you need to start with them two right there. He asked me what I thought. That's what I thought. And it, you could tell, it, it just like he thought I was playing at first, and I just walked off. And I realized, I was like, you know, maybe I shouldn't even said nothing. But then he shouldn't ask me, you know. But, like, I – 
I see where you're coming from with the, you got to figure out what to say to people. So, so that way you don't just blurb something out because, because I've got that problem too. So I might have to use your, uh, one of your phrases there. You know, if he suits you, he suits me. I, that sounds pretty good. I ain't going to say where I was at or what was going on, but I'll just say this. I had a 24 hour armed guard. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, we, and it was an eight hour shift. I've been to them places. Yeah. I've been and, there. Uh, they were as eight hour shifts. And, uh, so that, that, that was funny on the 16th day. I knew about not only what day it was, but about what time it was. And, uh, that just astounded that doctor, but I was keeping up with it by changing of the guard. Yeah. And here's what the old man told me. The best response is always, I understand. Yeah. And <laughs> you don't go in, you don't elaborate on what you understand. I mean, you know, you might just understand that he's dumb as hell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I understand. And when they come back, he's like, you say, I understand. Yeah. And then put some, put some space in there before you get offended. <laughs> I got all right. Hey, that's even better. Yeah. So now when we're all standing around talking to somebody, ask something, Pat, and I look over there and I say, I understand. You, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm going to start laughing. Yeah, we'll know exactly what we're talking about then, won't we? <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, guys, we ain't putting nobody down. No. I guarantee y'all, if y'all are around me for an hour, you're going to watch me do something completely. They say, God, you're so intelligent. I say, you know what? I do a lot of dumb stuff to be an intelligent man, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. If they're around if they're around you for an hour, they're gonna love you, I guarantee you. He's there or they're gonna hate I, you. <laughs> you know what? If you're around like I won them guys over that wanted to whip me. Yeah. That's that etiquette. Them over. Um that's where that I didn't etiquette win them comes in. I, was scared of them. I didn't win them over because I was scared of them. I didn't need Nothing in the paper on the rest report about a hawk hunter doing nothing. Yeah. Didn't need no five o'clock news. I understood because of the greater good and the big picture. Mm -hmm. That's why I go to girls. That's it. And plus I help Jake. Jake asked me, I'm going to go. Me and him, I mean, we, I don't know. I hate to talk too good about him. You know, I said in that magazine article to say, and he is already booting Crockett Worthy. I hate to blow it up anymore, you know. But uh, he is who he is, but he, he's always treated me good. Yep. And I am who I am, too, now. That's like I was talking to somebody earlier, and they said, boy, we really get along. I said, it's because we're the same kind of weird. Yeah. There you go. But that, that, that's, that that's true about Jake. Like you said, he's, he's always treated me good. I, I don't care how he's what he's done to somebody else because he ain't done nothing to me for me to even think that he would do somebody else different, you know? Well, he, he's always been straight with me. Put the whole story in proper context, probably. Yeah. That's generally what comes about it uh, that I, that I have found when, if somebody has a disagreement or, or, or they see things different than the way he sees it, it's usually because he didn't just roll over and kiss their ass. You know, he, he didn't yeah. just say, "Oh, it's okay, baby." You know, he, he, you know, he it's probably more along the lines of, uh, he just told him, you know, hey, it is what it is, and moved and, on. And ninety nine percent. The reason why I bragged on him is ninety nine percent of the time, after we get all by ourselves because we sit at night and talk about what went on during the day, he'll say, "You was absolutely right," but. For the bigger picture, for the greater cause. Yeah. We just got to go this direction or that direction. And that's why, though, I can't see the Woods class making it a whole lot longer. Uh, Ed Barnes' idea, we tried it. It's just, it ain't enough sugar for the honey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I get it. I do. It, it's one of those deals. It's just, it's going to be hard to do. Cause there's going to be somebody that's going to, there's always going to be somebody that's trying to slide something in, uh, something shady or arguing. It, it's always something, you know, and you're going to deal with that in anything that you do really, but it just, it just yeah. makes it hard when you're already fighting a, a damn uphill battle to add, to throw more fuel on a fire that you already can't keep put down hardly. Hey. Yeah, it's like that book I wrote. Remember that time when you had that boar competition? Yeah. How to guess the weight of a boar hog, you That's know? That's right. Yep. 
You wait till five minutes for the hunt's over, and you make him five more payoffs in the last two minutes. That's yeah. it. <laughs> that's hey, that's Uncle Patty. Hey, look here. Hey, look, if we can't cheat our buddies, ain't nobody else going to let us. That's exactly right. You know, and speaking of that, we're fixing to have that uh, that Shankathon. We're going to have another hunt this year. And, we, you know, we came to the conclusion over the past couple of years of doing it is if somebody's going to cheat or try to cheat, uh, that that's on them. They're, I can't stop them from trying. Now I can catch them at it, and we have, and, and I, I haven't expressed it, and we hadn't just we haven't made it public a whole lot or none of that. But there's been some videos that you could tell that uh they they weren't acceptable, and so they were not accepted. I, I'm not going to cheat a whole group of of guys that are out here hunting and doing it the right way because one person wants to be a dumbass. Sorry, it ain't mm-hmm. happening. Right. But uh, but like you said, there's it seems like it's always somebody's trying to cheat their buddy, and that and that's what really that's what really sucks about it's because it, it seems like it was people that you know. <laughs> it, it, oh, it always is. You you could have somebody on the corner of the street at the street light giving out hundred dollar bills, but the word was you couldn't give it one. Somebody messed it up within thirty minutes trying to get two somehow, some way. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Giving out hundred dollar bills, somebody would try to get to and mess it up for everybody else. And, and and you know, I I didn't I used to hear a lot of guys talk about, you know, supporting your friends and supporting your family, uh, like in business and stuff. You know, we got a little business, which I, I've had my own yeah, business you? for a long time. I got a business. You know, <laughs> it's it's crazy because like even to this day. People that are that are in my family, they'll they'll drive right by our store, go right down over here and buy whatever they need for their dog. But then you'll also like people that that I knew that were my buddies or my friends, they'll drive out of their way and will will choose to spend more money and shop with us because they're really supporting us. Um, and, you know, and it, it's not- it's just it drives me insane. That usually it's the people that were closest to me. I found out, like you know, or I thought they were closest to me. They, they're they're always just try out trying to better get it for themselves or something. I guess I don't know. Screw you over. Well, hey, look, man, I've been through about everything a person can be could be going through, but uh, you got to feed what feeds you. God, there's no doubt God made everything because it, everything is the same. Circles and yep. cycle. Seasons, months, the sun, the earth around the sun, everything circles and cycles. That's why a wedding ring is round. It's, yep. ci- it's circles. It's everything. That's why Jesus killed the fig tree. Not because he is hungry, but because it took from the earth nutrients and didn't produce no fruit with it. Huh. It was unproductive. It didn't give back. It took, but didn't give back. So I'm going to say this, guys. If you always taken, there's a 100% chance that every relationship you're ever going to be in is going to fail. Yep. It has to be reciprocal. And that's, but they, and that's the relationship between you and your dogs, too. Yes, sir. Yep. Ain't no doubt. That's them. That's say I like the way you put stuff like that. This 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 stuff's gonna work out good, Pat. Having you on here. I don't know, man. I'm one, serious. One I think I, it, I, I, I know it will. I hope I didn't cuss. Because I, I don't think you cuss. I don't think you cuss not one time. Thank you, Jesus. I've been praying about it. I know. I, cuss, I cussed um, a little bit, not not too bad, you know. Because sometimes I, I, I don't get care. You, the bad wasn't on you, cousin. I, it was I, I know, on me. But, you didn't offend me. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. But you, I know you was trying to do right, uh, and so yeah, I was I'm trying not to get. Leave. I was trying not to get yeah. out of hand, you know, because you yeah, know how it I is. Appreciate that. If I get to get to going off at the mouth over here, and you might slip up, I don't want. You know, I'm trying to support you. I don't want you to slip up. Hey, I'm responsible for me. You know, I, know. I was. Uh, I used to talk to them them drug addicts because I'm a drug addict, and but I've been there, but I ain't no more. Been a long time, and. Uh, their moms would say, well, them old pushers just got them on that dope. I said, ma'am, I don't know what kind of pushers they got, but the ones I had made me buy it. Yeah. They didn't show them that time. Yeah, exactly. It's your and own when choice. when you quit babying your baby, 
He'll tighten up and become a man. You damn or right. A woman. That, that's a, that's a fact. You know, uh, any kind of answer you want, and if I can ever help anybody with answering the Bible, for some reason I know it. I wanted to be an outlaw, and God just wouldn't let me. I mean, it's the worst outlaw, and I, I could do, maybe I could shoot an old doe or whatever. <laughs> but I ain't going to do that because I'd have to clean it. <laughs> there you go. But, you know, that, uh, I, I've noticed that over the you know the time that we've known each other is is you do you do know a lot about the Bible and Scripture. And I don't know how. Well, I mean. I don't know. I couldn't tell you were nothing. I know it starts with Genesis. Yeah. <laughs> and it is with Revelation. Well, I mean, somewhere somewhere in the middle, some you know, you got it from somewhere. And we well, all I can tell you. I can tell you I was on rock bottom and I just read the Bible for what it was, like a child, like you say you're supposed to read it. And I took all the religion out of it mm -hmm. and I started doing what they done. And I started getting what they got. Really? God ain't here. God ain't here. That Bible ain't nothing but a recipe book. People, some people try to beat you over the head with it. It's not for that. No. It's a self-help medical book. It's a recipe book. It's a, uh, if you want, if you, if you looking for a certain goal, just go in the Bible and read about what they did and do that and you'll get it. Yeah. God ain't here. He left. There you go. See, y'all, yeah. Yeah. Y'all listeners said, need to, need to pay attention. Uncle Pat's yeah. dropping that knowledge. So you want to know how I get my dogs to run? I just declare my dominion over them and tell them, you're such a good dog. And I have people look at me like, my God, that's a good dog. Yeah. yeah. There you and go. Because you know, that's what, you know, Jesus didn't tell the wind to quit blowing. He said, peace. So I'm not going to tell my dog to quit banging that armadillo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I'm going to say, boy, look at him, look at him bay. I'm just going to leave the armadillo part off. Yeah. And, you know, I Calling found. Calling things that are not is what it's called. Calling things that are not as though they were. And and over time, like you get a lot of guys that are uh, you know younger generation that's just starting out with dogs. What you just said, like your dog being armadillo, and you know there's a lot of them. They 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 get it handed down to them. They it's monkey see monkey do. So they'll take a lead and whoop that dog's ass real good and all this. And I, I don't. I just I don't. You know the dog doesn't know that it's trash or whatever you want to call it because it's game. The dog's doing what he's supposed to do. So. Over the course of the next two or three years, as long as you put him on what you want him to run, that's well, what he's going to run. Video. You failed the dog by not putting him where a hog was yeah, at. Yeah, you, you messed it up because I know dogs that have never ran. I got dogs that have never ran any any off game that we didn't want to run. But I always put them in the spot where there's hogs. So, you know, I, I, was just, I just thought I'd throw that out there for some of the – the guys that are that are dealing with uh, trash breaking or whatever you want to call it, a lot of times that'll just straighten itself out. Oh yeah, they'll. But now I'm gonna tell you, about three or four it'll straighten out. But I got a dog right now, eight years old. If I drop him three times where ain't no hogs, he's thinking it's deer season. Yeah, yeah. Because now that, he that's, said, that's, man, that's, he said, I know Pat, I know Pat ain't with this dumb. So <laughs> I'm, we must, it must be December the tenth. Yeah. And I missed it somewhere. And, and, and he and said, like, that goes back to hog. that goes back to putting them in the spot where the hogs are at. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the dogs, the dogs don't. By the third time, I mean, he done trailed out, and people says, "Well, you'll never be a hog." Let me tell y'all something. If I show up with a dog, like around now, I'll take anything up with Jake and him because I mean they got better dog. I mean, I don't care. But like if I go off in some like like in a little bit of a push, yeah. you can believe one thing I did. I brought a dog, a real one. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't go. If I didn't think I couldn't win, I didn't go. You know. Yeah, exactly. I don't like the feet. I just stay out of the fight. <laughs> I'm a little bit chicken crappy, is what I'm trying to tell y'all. Yeah. But uh, if you see me, hey, look, if you see me betting on something, just follow in behind me. Yeah. Because I know something. Something. Coming. Something's happening. Yeah. You bet. So. A lot of times when I jump these deer, that dog's still doing the same thing he's supposed to do on that hog. Runs to catch. Yep. I got I, everybody's seen the video. That ain't fake. 
You can ask Carter, whatever. I, I had a video of a 155-inch eight-point. Yeah. <laughs> You, did you see it at Earl's? Yeah. <laughs> now, I didn't tie it. I didn't tie it. Yeah. I didn't tie it. And the dog's seven years old. But the dog come off my yard at about two months old. Oh. <laughs> the dog come off my yard. That's, I seen that. Hours. I was like, oh, my Lord. That's what I'm talking and, about. Tied it up. Yeah. And he runs and camera crosses, too. Yeah. See, and after we got to talking, his grandpa used to run dogs with my daddy. Ain't that weird? That is. Small girl. Yep. That you know, that, talking about the the camera crosses and stuff like that, that's what got that's what piqued my interest in a, a lot of it is, man. Every time we talk about you know what my best bay dog I ever seen was and blah 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 and all that, it would either be a mountain cur or Kimmer or some kind of cross, and then I'd be talking to just whoever, some older guy, and he he's like, yeah, I had this little old dog. He's you know she was half mountain cur or full mountain cur. It always went back to Kimmer or mountain cur. So that's that's why we were when when I met you and seen what you were breeding up, we were already breeding the same style of stuff. And wow. I had uh we had some running dogs from uh we had some coyote hounds that we had got from Mike Sapp out of Michigan and we were gonna do some crossing with them, uh some running walkers, you know. And that's been I don't know how long ago, Nate, four or five years ago. Probably. Oh, he's a good dude, ain't he? Yeah, he, he's a mess. Uh, and so, like I said, it always would revert back to that camera or mountain cur, and we've always had squirrel dogs. So, hell, I got a damn, I got mountain curs, you know, and I've got, now we got cameras. We we didn't have cameras at first, but we had mountain old stock mountain curs, and, uh, I, which I like brindle dogs, and Man, I'm gonna tell you. I like you. the busher type. I like the busher type Kimmer. You ought to know what that means. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the old, hey, look, that old rough hair. I, I showed up over there and they had some plot guys from Indiana. You got hair about and, an inch uh, and a half long, sticking off his man, ass. I dropped that old shaggy dog. Yeah. Out. When did he get mad? I said I picked him up at the dump on the way over here. That's it. Hey, them plots was out there. I ain't talking about you plot guys. Don't get on to me. Yeah. But these guys is like they placing in these companies. Look here, they shaggy. But let me tell you what old shaggy is. He's half Kimmer and half July. Out of the best ones money can buy. I mean, he's bred. He's just shaggy. And it's coming from the, probably from the Irish Wolfhound in the July. Yeah. And the, the uh, Busher type Kimmer. And he might get killed tomorrow, but he's never been cut because of that shaggy coarse hair. Yep. It'll turn that tooth. I don't know. The old people used to say it. they done it for cockleburr. People say, you don't get no cockleburrs in that shaggy? No. Not a one. Not, Not a, a one. one. We, we've been running know. Airedale. I've run the long-haired Jags for years. Then we, yeah. cr then we cross them back with the Airedale. And we, I mean, I still got them on my yard to this day. I still run them. I, I like running a rough coat dog. And like you said, I had a dog named King. He got killed uh, summer before last. Had him for nine years as a straight running catch dog, and I guarantee you, I never put more than a half dozen staples in him in nine years. And he fi he yeah. finally he finally met one. He would they well, was, he got so he couldn't get out of the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> at, at, listen, he was caught on the on the hog. A big the hog was like two seventy. I think we weighed him as two sixty five or two seventy five. And another hog was there. They had rallied up, and while he was caught. They was working him over, you know, and uh, I actually had to put him down. It, it was uh, the injuries were so bad we couldn't put him back together. But I, I put it this way: he was laid on the bed of that ranger on that buggy. He was laying there taking them shallow breaths, and I whistled a little bit. And I was I, I had tears running down my cheeks. I said, mm. "You ready to go get him?" I said, "I'm gonna pick his head up and went to sliding sideways. Everything that yes, was indeed. inside of him was strolled out, and this son of a gun." strolled up tried to get up and go again and i carried him over me and him sat down and talked for a minute and we got it over with you know but that that shaggy hair saved him for many 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 years and and, and i will I'll, I'll i'll go with that uh did, didn't ever get no bunch of cuckaburs or none of that junk in their hair that, that coarse hair like you said it'll turn a tooth hey i'm gonna I'm say something you was talking about crazy Mr. Rodney Andrews wanted one of them relief I had. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you can't help but like him. And he's, a, he's an old dog man, too. He knows what he's looking at. Oh, yeah. So I gave him one. I said, but now, 
He's just different now. I'm just telling you, you just. He called me and says, how you keep them in a pen? <laughs> I was like, well, carefully. Uh, if there's a knot hole, they will get out. I, they'll stand there and watch you open that gate. And you close the gate, he'll just wear up there and take his foot and do what you did. Yep. I mean, I just, uh, so it was summertime, and the puppy was maybe about six or seven months old. Had to be the end of summer. And the deer were spotted fawns, but they was, you know, following the mama. His dog climbed out, and y'all call Rodney right Andrews. Don't listen to me. If you don't believe me, call him for yourself. Caught him a spotted fawn and brought it home, climbed and put it back in the pen with him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I heard about and that. What the man told me, you know, um, I ain't saying he did no big feet because Spotted Fawn barely could probably run. I'm just saying he just brought it home yeah, with him like been, a duck dog. Well, I think say that's a good retrieve on my on any I've ever seen. I guarantee you. I don't remember if the dude was alive or dead when he did it, but yeah. Don't matter. He brought it back home. That's a meat dog. Yeah, yeah. So call Rodney Andrews. <laughs> but he, he, he's really liking his, we call them yellow dogs, but they white. Yeah. I don't know. About that, but it probably to do the line breeding from them being family dogs. So, That's butter, buttermilk. Rather, That's in buttermilk, dog. Buttermilk, buttermilk, buttermilk. <laughs> hey, if I had one, uh, one of them buttermilks, I'd name him Biscuits. Yeah. Huh? That's it. That's it. That's exactly yeah, right. Uh, oh, my so, God. So, kind of wrapping everything up, yep. I think we will come to the conclusion that no matter what your breed of dog is, but especially a buttermilk dog, we want to get it from a family. Yeah, I'm not a dog jockey. And then proper etiquette would be if your dog bites a dog's ear off, go find the man right then. Tell and, him. And and y'all and try to get him fixed up. Yeah. Proper etiquette. Chances uh, are he's going to understand that things happen. He's probably not even going to be that damn mad about it. You know, I mean, it, 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 even if he is, he'll calm down and get to thinking about, hey, well, at least he came right. and told me. That's right. And that'll get you a long uh, ways. A fast barking dog is better than a silent slow dog. Yep. I think that too. Uh, I do. And, and, and what else do we say? I don't know. The, the, oh, they the, won't, you can't sign the back of divorce papers like a car title. I know that today. It, it, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna, Look, I'm going to hang on to mine. She, she's been doing pretty good. She, she's put up with me for shit about 20 years, so. Well, I'm gonna hang on you to probably didn't, you probably didn't do like I did. See, I didn't go to the rule book like I do on everything else. Yeah, I just found somebody I liked, there and it was go. what I had to find. <laughs> but the Bible says they got to be a wife first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's where you that, know who knows you need to be a husband. I don't know, but you know, Son of Zeus, Art of War. Is a book that was written 500 years before Jesus walked the face of the earth, and it's still in print today. My other piece of advice is made about 70 some pages. Read that. Yeah. A son, he invented the game of chess to teach his soldiers strategy. Um, the emperor cut his legs off and gouged his eyes out mm. because he was scared of him, that he was scared he would rule the he world. Rule, so, yeah, he'd be the ruler. Yeah. So, if you want to understand something, read that and cross-reference it with the Bible about spirits and your words and how you talk to something. In the 80s, it was a big deal, and you'll remember this. Me and you about the same age. Yeah. Um, well, they put plants in two different office buildings, uh -huh. and one set of people talk negative, and one set of people talk positive yes, to their plant, and the uh, negative wilted and died, and the other one with the positive speech with, flourished. With flourish, yep. And that's where I use that to talk to these dogs. I, I don't ever say, I, I don't ever get on to them too much. Uh, if I do, it's, the tone is still correct. Yes. Because you have what you say, first in thy mouth and then in thy heart. And, and it'll be the same way for him. And as, as uh, Jake says it, then he'll bleed for you. Yep. Ain't no doubt, brother. And when you get one that does that, you'll know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You'll know. He, he might be just old mediocre dog, but when you see him bleed for you, yeah, he, he's the best thing since sliced you, bread. You ain't lying. I, and I've had a few of them. I've been blessed and and had them. Like and I and I've told a lot of guys. I said, you know, I used to think I had some some good dogs until I went and, and seen some good dogs, and then I realized I was like, damn. Yeah. And then when yeah. I when I did get a sure enough dog. 
and uh, they give you everything they got, you know, it, it's a different feeling. It's, you know, it, it really is. And and I, I hope all, all these guys that listen, I, I hope the ones that had dogs that they're lucky enough to have had a dog like that or they got one in the near future and all you young guys, please pay attention to what Pat just said about the, about the way you talk to your dogs and stuff. I preach the the energy that dog can feel, and he will he will he will act the same way you're acting. That that yeah, that goes I, hand yeah. in hand, man. It, it he hit it dead on. So y'all y'all really just, pay attention. Just like to your that. horse, yeah. Just like your horse takes it through the back. Yeah. When you back in that box, the bulldog roll camera where Hey, look, I love the rodeo. I ain't no good at it. <laughs> I got zero athletic ability, but I love it. But I know one thing's for sure. That dog takes it down that lead yep. just like that horse does through his backbone. Yes, sir. You don't believe me. I will tell you about this fat girl I was sitting on one time and she farted. I felt it shook. It felt like the earth was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't, I mean, it's a bad analogy. I'm just trying to be funny. But no, it's the thing. I'm going just clench my bet right then. You reckon? Yeah. We may have to get nice and edit that out. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's it's the, it's the truth. I mean, it's it's one of those deals where – and the older you get, you know, like like Pat was saying earlier, y'all, these old-time dog guys, they wouldn't giving you nothing. They didn't tell you nothing. They didn't help you. They're not going to give you no. a stick to hit, you over, hit, you, hit them over their own head. So we had but, to learn a lot of this on our own or, one, or one by stays, watching or by yeah. watching. Once they saw you wasn't a one hitter quitter. Yep, then they would. But you then had you to do what they anything. did. You didn't, then you didn't have to ask them anything. No, they would see you doing something wrong and walk over. Come here, you little dummy! You ain't never gonna. They talk bad to you when they're doing it. Through. Oh you Lord! You ain't never gonna learn nothing. You still, you still dumb as hell, boy. Watch you know you do it like this. Yep. They'll start taking it for, and just let them. Just yep. let them because they mean well. Oh, exactly. Even though they're mean, they mean well. And now, nowadays, Pat, that would be that would be mean. Now, you know, there it's if people talk the way that we were talked to and treated the way they talked to, I think the world would be a way better place. I'm gonna tell y'all about seventy five percent of y'all have better dogs if yeah. you change hunting buddies. Oh, that'd be the that'd be the first damn thing. They, hey, man, people won't even change hunting buddies because. So and so's got a good spot. I don't give a damn. He's got the best spot in the world. If he ain't worth the shit, I ain't going. Cause your dogs pick it up. Yep. Your dogs is gonna pick it up without a doubt. So. All right. Well, what else did we uh go over, Pat? Like you said, we were getting I don't close know. to I got some sidetracked. Man, I we got some sidetracked. I don't even know, man. Well, we fit. Well, I mean, we answered all the questions. Uh, uh, the you know, like with the the yellow dog lines. Uh, Garrett, you know, and and Rowdy, they gave some uh, some insight on those those right. the, See, the lineage. He told me, you know, in which we already knew that Randy Wright didn't breed Weatherford Ben. Yes, that, that but I'm gonna tell you, ben I never Jordan, liked the right? Ben dogs. But now he had a dog at Pistolero. Yes. Now I like that dog. I had a dog off of him that did good. Okay. And but the jilt was off of that Montana dog. It went all in bed. I think was off Montana. Yeah. May have been Cushana. Old Bill Parker had it, and I bred it to that dog off of that Pistolero. And I think the jilt went back to Okie Finoki Cowboy out of Florida. Yep. Uh, this is man, y'all look. It's been a long time ago. That that little yellow dog, were, Charlie. Those dogs made cat. Those dogs casted. They were yes. proof yellow, but they casted. That that yellow dog, Charlie, I had. Uh, he got killed the same time my king dog did. He was out of that Montana dog. Uh, okay. And I'm telling you, he was a dude. Once he figured it out, he was a little late starter. And partially that was on my fault because we were, he was the first one that we ever got to try to do bay pinning with. And once he Dang. realized he had teeth, he wasn't no bay pin dog. But that son of a gun found a pile of hogs, man, a bunch of them. Uh, yeah. So uh, that you know that anything out of that Montana stuff, there, that that's good stuff. Yeah, it was man, and, and Jake could tell you. Koshana. I don't know 
man, I don't know, two dogs, one on top of the other, all, both of them looking north. You know, I, yeah. <laughs> I think that woman asked, asked Randy, you know, much as I like picking at Randy about goose, that woman said, well, what has he produced? Well, I was a little tight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of in the spirit. I said, well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it wasn't kittens. Yeah. It was puppies. <laughs> Uh, it was puppies. Click. Yeah. Next. That's it. Go to the next one. But she said it condescending. Yeah. Much as I like to roast old Randy, you know, he's really a good guy. Yeah. He's starting to hunt a lot more, too. He come with me and little yeah. bitty goose or goose the third or whatever he calls him. Yeah. He, uh, he's more holy than righteous, too. <laughs> he ain't running no tens though. That's he was about nine, four, five. Cause he's running in bark and looks side to side. Randy says, "I understand what you're talking about now." <laughs> yeah, it's a little different, ain't it? <laughs> it's a lot different. Yeah. Yeah, Randy's got Randy got him Walker dog too, don't he? He got a trim Walker. Trim Walker. There's nothing wrong with a trim Walker. Just gonna be a little slower. I think so, but I mean, he's working a little do. bit better. I mean, I do. I'm not an expert on it by no means. I just, you know, I just figure they. Most of the tree and yeah, walker stuff. You know why them tree and walkers and them blue teeth and tans got them long ears? What's that? That's for them. That's for them possums to trapeze off of, to oh, swing off. Of. Swing off the, them possum swingers. Yeah. Good God Almighty! We got Nathan got a damn little cur dog, a uh, little Kimmer pup, and uh, it comes from a man who's been breeding them many, many years. And one of the parents came out of Robert Kimmer's yard. And this pup has some mud flaps on it, son. It looks like he's half English. I'm talking about this son of gun has got a strong hound influence. I don't know where it came from. Bush but, or top. But I'm telling you, you'll love this one, Pat. So when he get, he's about four months old now, and he, he'll win. I mean, right now. Hell, he'll throw that head up. He'll open up, turn him loose, and he'll go. What It, it might be a piece of a, a hog hide or a possum or whatever. But the puppy's ready to get it. Hey, one time I woke up in the back of a Dodge Doodly in the back seat, and we was at plot days. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that part. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm trying not to get in trouble. And uh, they had done had the plot bear baying, and now they was having a U AKC, UK, whatever, NK, I don't know what, KPC. Yeah. And uh, it was the two dog. And they had this big black camera. He must have weighed 50 or 60. But he was kind of fat, black, black, you know, good looking, bushel top. And they had him paired with his plot dog. And I bought him for about $30 in the cow cutter. Uh huh. Hey, look, he's about 30 seconds left. And I was having the only perfect. I know it's a cow and I'm my money. And that, that camera done got to watching that bear thing, you know, some some mounted bear growling and then jumping at him through this cage and that plot touched that camera. He thought that bear had him again. <laughs> so Oh, Ty Dog must have weighed 80. It didn't matter. That, that, that camera car grabbed him, picked that whole dog up and and shook him. <laughs> <laughs> that went my fault. Yeah, he was gone. And I offered the man another 40 for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he got bad offended. Yeah. <laughs> and then he figured out I was just holding him. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want that dog. If, if they'd have beat me, I, I'd still be trying to sew it up. Yeah, if that, that'd <laughs> be pretty rough. Hurt. Yeah, I thought they was going to get a brain stick in there. Or, uh, I'd have used a hot shot with a long damn one. A long handle. Yeah, one that's of, my best memory of plot days. Hell yeah. Which, by hey, plot days, we got one coming up pretty pretty soon here. In, uh, in Alabama? No, it, it'll be at Hickory Crossing at uh, Georgia. In Georgia. Yep. Man, I ain't never got to go. Man I'm out there, Mr. Leader. Martin, them, every year they do plot days at uh, – at Hickory Crossing, and they do one in, in what is it, Nate? June this year? I think the weekend of June eighth, they'll do it, and they'll have a they'll have a hog bay, they'll have a bear treeing, uh, coon treeing, you know, all kind of stuff, and there'll there'll be a good selection of dogs. They'll have an open bay as well for uh for non plots, you know, and there'll, there'll yeah. be a pile of people there. So if any of y'all listeners that want to ride out or need more information, check out uh, Hickory Crossing. Field trials, or or get with me, or Mister Mark, or hell Ryan and Carter, any of us, we can we can put you in the right direction. Hey, hey, I ain't saying one bay is better than another, but plot days and the jag deal over at the Boar's Nest and Tyler, 
That's all right. Hey, it's just, it's just, man, I, I used to didn't. Hey, look, they want me to judge, but hey, I was in no shape to judge nothing. I was having me a good time. We shrieking coons and blood trailing and chasing a fox through this thing. Yep. Man, hey, look, it wasn't just that same old redundant deal, which I ain't down at all, man. But them little dogs is amazing anyway. They sure I owned are. some of them one time, then I found somebody I didn't like and gave them to them. Yeah, that's about what you... <laughs> Man, boy, they mean as a whip snake. I don't, we've got a few here. I don't know how many we got. Uh, We've probably got five or six of my old ones. They are cool. They are cool little animals. Yeah, they, they, they'll bleed for you. All these will. And they'll make stuff bleed for you, too. <laughs> oh yeah, geographical location. Yeah, they have their place. I promise you. You get these brush piles and these thickets around here, real, real thick stuff. Hey, yeah, they'll be in on them before they can even move, buddy. And they they don't bait too good though. <laughs> Not none of you these. Know, you know, we done talk three hours. I, I yeah, I imagine so. Uh, I figure uh, it's a pretty good segment for the first one that we've done. So. We've been we've been covered everything that on the question part and a bunch of stuff that wasn't on the question part. So I like I'm with you. I say we wrap this dude up and uh we'll get some more well, uh, get the listeners to give us some more again? questions. Yeah. Yeah, send us some more questions. Send us some more questions uh, stuff. We'll wrap we'll we'll do this. We'll try to do this every every couple of weeks or so. Or that as, sounds good to me. Or as many questions as they send. If we get a, a good response, we'll do it as often as we need to. Whatever works out for you, Pat. Hey, if you give me a little feedback, like I told somebody, I can do anything but make a full blood Democrat That's under it. proper motivation. <laughs> we, we, hey, we all know a lot of stuff. We just don't all know it at the same time. Yep. Tonight, talking remind. I didn't. I may not have learned nothing, but I relearned a bunch of stuff tonight. Yes, sir. Myself. And yep. I appreciate the questions, and it, it jogs your memory and jogs your mind, and it's just a good feeling, you know. It, it really yeah. is, and uh, you know, I, like I said, I, I think we'll, I think this will work out good, and uh, man, we appreciate your time. Uh, we really appreciate you, you know, just just taking time out of your day to do this, and it, it's it helps us by you know listeners because they they want to hear you, they want to hear your knowledge, and they want to talk with you, and and. You know, see see what you got to say about some of the stuff that they want to know. So uh, I think it's all worked out pretty good. So y'all listeners out there, make sure that you give us some feedback because we don't know what else to do un until you you know we we just we just winging it. So y'all got to give us something to go by. That's right. And, we uh, love y'all. All right. Don't well, forget it. That's that's real deal. Yes, sir. We 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 got to we got to have these. We got to have the listeners. We got to have the next generation. So uh, you know, if y'all y'all make sure you take them kids hunting fishing uh, and if y'all ever want to go hunt all you got to do is holler at any of us and, and we'll go get after it <laughs>